Edgewood Veterans Stadium. We are live with Medina Valley and Kennedy High School. Both teams fixing to square off. This is the third week of district for both teams. Medina Valley comes in with a record of 2-0 in district play. Kennedy coming in at 0-2. Medina Valley coming off wins against Lockhart in the first game of district, and then they beat Bernie Champion two weeks ago at Medina Valley. 35-34 was the final score. Medina Valley winning that at the end of the ball game after Champion had reeled off 21 and answered. Medina Valley came back, took the lead. Champion tried a 53-yard field goal at the end of the ball game to try to win it, and it came up short. And the Panthers came out victorious 2-0. Um, a little bit partly cloudy sky here tonight. A nice stadium here at Edgewood Memorial Stadium. A uh, turf field with the track around it. Um, good, sta good stands, uh, great press box that we're in here tonight. And uh, I'm Jared Lucky. I'm along with Mari Stein, and Jeff Stivers is here as well. And uh, Mari, good night for a ball game here on Thursday. Beautiful night for a ball game on a Thursday night. Uh, both teams coming off of the bye week as the whole district was on bye last week. So I like that, Jared, rather than staggered because everybody has the same advantage. Everybody has the same disadvantage, if you want to call it that, for, by not keeping going with your season. But I think a bye week for everybody in the same week is, is, is a, good, a good idea. The wind is blowing from the south to the north. And a pretty good breeze as the flags are flying pretty straight across as, you know, uh, team that's going from right to left will be win aided through this ball game and as Jared mentioned the Panthers coming off of a one point victory to go to 2-0 and against the champion Chargers and that put Medina Valley at 2-0 and but that put Bernie behind the, yep. the eight ball at 0-2 and, and that's something that we said you know you wanted to come into the bye week on a positive the Panthers are riding a three game winning streak now coming into this game and Jared mentioned that that uh, it was a one-point game and and the Chargers had lined up to try a 53-yard field goal the Panthers iced him because they had a timeout and he had plenty of leg on that first one second one the hold wasn't really that good and and to to get with that hold their normal holder was not there because he had got when they missed the extra point which was the difference in the ball game the holder tried to field it and run with it, and he got tackled awkwardly. So they had a new holder out there, and from what we all saw, the ball wasn't set right, yeah. and that that allowed the kicker. He he never he never got close. No, it wasn't close. It looked like the like we said the first time before Medina Valley took the timeout. He had plenty of leg to make a 53-yard field goal. Um, fortunately for the Panthers, the, the next hold was not a good one, and he wasn't able to hit the ball the way he wanted to, and it, it came up about 10 or 15 yards short, and so Medina Valley came out with the win there, but it was a good play ball game for Medina Valley. They showed they showed a lot of grit in that game after Champion reeled off 21 unanswered points. Medina Valley looked like it was fixing to be out of that ball game completely, and the Panthers bared down and managed to come back and, and win that ball game and, and that tells a lot about your football team when they get down like that to come back and make sure that they can still get a W in a football game like that. Well and, and you had a, a, some young guys that were just moved up that, that ate it. You, know, you had number 13 Hernandez that came in and they moved him up from the JV and he was only a sophomore and he filled the shoes of some of the injuries and I tell you what as we talked during the, the halftime show and the post game show Number 13 deserved a, deserves a spot after that game, and he's out there right now, and he's in the starting lineup for the Panthers this evening. Yeah, he played a great game for Medina Valley. He caught a couple of passes. He ran the ball well. He hurdled a guy on one of his longer runs of the, of the evening against Champion, um, showed some athleticism, and he's got a lot of speed, and it was very good to see a lot of positive things from him, especially just being called up from the JV. He made a big impact right away on the football game. Um, we gave a lot of credit to the offensive line. They were our players of the game in that we gave it to the whole offensive line because they opened up a lot of holes. They allowed James Gibson to run the football well. Hernandez, um, just just a good job by that offensive line. And then, you know, we, we say it all the time, the, the defense played very well in that game, um, especially when they needed a stop at the end of that football game. They came up with it. You know, in the second half, we watched the quarterback for – Bernie Champion basically run all over Medina Valley for 
a quarter and a half there toward the end, and then Medina Valley was able to tighten up a little bit, make the stop when they absolutely needed it to give themselves a chance to win the football game. They needed to make two back-to-back stops just to tie up the ball game, and then needed another stop after the missed extra point, and the Panthers scored and made the extra point. The Chargers had the ball with time left on the clock, and the Panthers forced them into a long field goal. And so your defense made three stops at the end where it looked like for a while we we're going to have a hard time just stopping w- once because, yep. as you mentioned, the quarterback was just taking control of the ball game. And, you know, we, and he had the same cast of characters for the Panthers on the offensive side of the ball. You had number 25 coming in, Salas. You had number number uh, 23, Pardo, with that trap. He scored another touchdown yep. on that play. And your offense jailed when they had to, but your defense gave the offense a chance to come back and win in that ball game where it looked like for a long time midway through the third quarter and almost halfway through the fourth quarter that the Panthers weren't going to have enough on defense to stop them and get enough offensive possessions to come back from that 14-point deficit. Yeah, you're right. And uh, moving to, moving on to this game here this evening, Kennedy comes in 0-2 in district play. Um, from watching them on the field right here, it looks like they're going to be out of the shotgun a little bit. Um, they're going to spread things out a little. They have a left-handed quarterback for what I've seen on the field. Hernandez, um, left-hander in there, which is well, it's a little different look when you're when you're not used to seeing it. But it'll be a little bit of something the Panthers will have to adjust to. Um, but looks like they run from the eye a little bit. They're going to look to throw and run the football, and um, it's going to be up to the secondary for Medina Valley. And I really think the linebacker core for Medina Valley is going to be key. They played big parts in the games they played so far. Grant Snyder. Um, Dawson Grove, they've, they've all played very well. Um, I know there's another name in there that I'm, I'm leaving well, out. Well, you have Modulin. That's called yep. That calls the secondary coverage yep. there, who's kind of your quarterback on the defensive side of the ball. Snyder's the the quarterback that controls what the linebackers in the, the defensive line does. Modulin calls the coverage in the secondary. So you have two captains out yep. there, two field generals out there coexisting. Uh, coexisting together so and, and they've shown that they they can mesh together already because when they needed to as we mentioned last week or two weeks ago that you know they can do it and, and we usually have a Wednesday show separate sports for separate Sammys but because of the Thursday night ball game the JV and the freshman games were moved up to Wednesday and we didn't feel that it was important to take some of the people away from going and watching those games because you know as as you you know I, I keep the scoreboard for the freshman or the JV game so I wouldn't have been able to make it uh, Dwayne. Dwayne had a son playing so we chose to just take a week off or we would be talking about some of the players that we yeah. had for the coaches show but unfortunately because of the change of schedule yeah. us playing on, on Thursday night, we weren't able to have the show. Yeah, and, and in two weeks we're going to do that again. We're going to be right back here when Medina Valley plays Memorial, and that's on a Thursday night also at 7 o'clock. Um, let's go ahead and take a quick break real quick, and we'll come back with the starting lineups. Uh, you're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we'll continue in just a moment. Broadcast Network, we love all sports. We currently broadcast football, volleyball, basketball, softball, and baseball. We not only serve Medina Valley, we also can broadcast other schools in the area in multiple sports. If your business is interested in having us broadcast a single game or a season and you want to be part of the action, contact Jeff Stivers at 830-931-4504 or email him at jeff at mvbn.net. At North Park Chevrolet in Castro, we offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. Headed out to the game? Then make a stop at your local Valley Mart convenience store. With 12 area locations, Valley Mart is always right around the corner. Fuel yourself and your vehicle with quality branded gas and diesel, snacks and fountain drinks. Always convenient, well lit with clean restrooms. 
Valley Mart, family owned and operated since 1984, and a proud supporter of Medina Valley Athletics and area youth sports for over 30 years. Two, three, hit. More coverage of your high school teams. Let's just say we keep it real. And you know this, man. This is the KMAX Sports Network. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. Welcome back here to Edgewood Veteran Stadium. Medina Valley and Kennedy getting set to square off, and I'm going to turn it over to Maury Stein, who has the starting lineups for you this evening. We're going to go over to visiting Medina Valley Panthers, starting on the offense. At center, junior number 60, Spencer Payne. At strong guard, used to be number 55, Yancey Miller, but he is out. Yeah, he got injured last week. He's going to have surgery on his knee. He will be spelled by number 54, Nathan Nathaniel Trammell. At strong guard, at quick guard, senior number 52, Josh Valenzuela. At strong tackle, senior number 53, Edward Roya. At quick tackle, senior number 74, Jonah Barrow. At strong end, senior number 80, Aaron Sotelo. At wide receiver, senior number 7, Garrett Leggett. Swing man, number 25, Jacob Salas. Fullback is junior number 45, James Gibson. Halfback is number 13, Caden Hernandez. And a quarterback senior, number 10, Alec Child. On the defensive side for the Panthers, at tackles, one of the tackles, senior number 88, Steele Perry. And the other tackle, junior number 58, Trace Ferguson. The end for the Panthers this evening will be senior number 44, Isaac Santos, and senior number 21, Dylan Fillinger. At linebackers for the Panthers will be number 34, a junior, Taylor Weir, junior number 28, Grant Snyder, and junior number 1, Dawson Grove. Corners for the Panthers this evening will be junior number 5, Tanner Bippert, and senior number 42, Dante Henry. At strong safety, junior number 9, Charlie Marsh, and at free safety, number 12, Cole Moduling. Doing the place kicking for the Panthers this evening will be number 1, Dawson Grove, and the puncher will be number 10, Alec Child. For the home team, Kennedy Rockets will start with the offense. At center, number 61, Joey Chavez. At left guard, number 65, Angel Flores. At right guard, number 75, Anthony Carmona. At left tackle, number 63, Ethan Valdez. At right tackle, number 67, Joe Guerrero. At tight end, number 80, Dylan Hominguez. And at wide receiver, number 12, Josh Arguello. Quarterback will be number 5, Angel Sanchez. Tailback will be number 20, Justin Ariega. And at fullback, number three, Devin Salazar. On the defensive side of the ball, at nose tackle will be number 63, Ethan Valdez. At one of the ends will be number 50, Ezekiel Carrion. At the other end will be number 68, Daniel Ibarra. Outside linebacker, number 82, Jack LaRue. And the right side outside linebacker, number 45, Fernando Sandoval. At cornerback, number one, James Butler. At the other corner, Number two, Greg San Miguel. At safety, number 12, Josh Arguello. And at the other safety, number 40, Jeremy Estrada. Those are the starting lineups for both teams tonight. And uh, some news coming out. You mentioned in Medina Valley starting lineup that uh, Yancey Miller out with a knee injury. Um, that's going to be a hard hit to the offensive line. He was, he was a very good offensive lineman for the Panthers. Um, who, did, who did you say was filling in for him? Nathaniel Trammell. And as a big shoes, he's going to have to fill in there and, and to help that offensive line to open up some holes. As you see, of the running football team that Medina Valley has, and you know, missing one of your key key offensive linemen is a is a big loss. So hopefully, he's able to step in and, and fill those shoes pretty well here for the Panthers. And you had a you had a starter return, and you had number seventy four Jonah Barrow. He's actually returning to the starting lineup. He would have been filled in the last two games by number 64, Josh McAllister. So that's something that the Panthers could work on, too. You could see number 64, Josh McAllister, in there because he would be the other guard. So Nathaniel Trammell and Josh McAllister may fill in for Yancey Miller. I talked to him last night at the JV game. He seems positive. He's got surgery scheduled for to get the uh, MCL re repaired. So good luck to that young man, and hopefully everything comes out well for him. Yeah, and, um, 
Molly looking looking to this game here tonight. Med Medina Valley does a they're they're a running football team as we've seen. Um, I would imagine that I'd look for them to have a, a good game here against uh, Kennedy here tonight. Um, Kennedy looking for the first district win of the of the season here, and both teams coming off the bye week, and, and you never know how that's going to affect a team coming out of a bye week like that. You know, you haven't seen game action for a couple of weeks. Um, it's common for some teams come out looking flat. Um, you, you just hope that doesn't happen to you coming out of the bye week, and that's all That's all coaching right there, trying to keep their team ready and fired up and focused and ready to go for the game here this evening. Well, and that's why I mentioned I like it that the whole district is yeah. off all at the same time where you don't catch one team coming off of a bye and then the other team catches you off of a bye. It's, it's even keel because everybody in the district had the bye week off last week. And we laugh about it, but there was a moment two weeks prior to this that we thought we may we may be playing during that bye week. We yep. we had the second lightning delay over in Lockhart, and barely started on time yep. and barely finished before midnight. Yep. Or we would have had to reschedule that game or redo it some other time. Yeah, because that that game we had a lightning delay with nine nine twenty eight to go in the first in the first half. Left. We didn't restart playing that football game until 10:02, and when they finally resumed, fortunately both teams run the ball and run the same offense. We were able to get out of there. It was 11:45 when we left the stadium. But uh, like you said, if they were going to have to delay that game, it was going to be pushed back probably to the bye week and have to make that up. And that that game is a key game in district, and especially right now when you look at that Lockhart and uh, Bernie Champion are both 0-2. They're going to end up having to play each other. And like we said, there's five teams vying for four playoff spots virtually. And champion, you would think, is going to be one of those teams down at the end. And that Lockhart champion game is probably going to be a decisive game for who's going to get that fourth spot. Well, in the other big matchup this week with the top five, and I'm you know I'm not disregarding the other two, but it's, it's, coming, it's probably going to come down to, as we've mentioned, five teams uh, manning for those four spots. The other big game this week is... Kerrville Tyvee against Lockhart. Yep. So that is, I know you want to say it's a must win for Lockhart, but if if somehow Lockhart can win, yep. they yep. got the front yep. row ticket in front of champion. champion. Yep. And uh, let's go ahead and take another commercial break, and then we will come back. You're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we'll continue here in just a moment. Let's get social. Like Medina Valley Broadcast Network on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at MVBroadnet and visit the official website at MVBN.net. Get the latest and join the conversation about all things Medina Valley sports. Come on, let's talk. Security State Bank has one simple goal, to be the best bank possible to the families and businesses of South Texas. We believe in superior customer service, active community involvement, fair and honest business ethics and loyalty. We've been in Castorville for a year now and we've enjoyed growing with you. Come by 1726 Highway 90 East or call us at 830-538-9898. A real person will answer because that's how we do business with common courtesy and uncommon service. Bank online at securitystbk.com. Security State Bank, South Texas. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. From the time our alarm clock rings in the morning to when we turn the lights off at night, Electricity plays an important role in our lives, but most of the time, we don't even think about it. And you don't have to, because the employees at Medina Electric Cooperative are behind the scenes making sure you get reliable, affordable electricity delivered to your house or business. Your cooperative is here for you, and we have been since 1938. Connect with Medina Electric on Facebook, Twitter, or at medinaec.org. From West Texas all the way to the bio and all points in between. I saw miles and miles of Texas. All the this is the KMAC Sports Network, bringing your teams to you. Welcome back here to Veterans Memorial Stadium. We're live here as Medina Valley and Kennedy getting set to square off. The team's not quite out on the fields here 
just yet this evening. Um, a lot of pink on the sidelines um, as this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month here in October. Um, the Kennedy faithful all wearing pink here for the most part tonight. Um, Great cause. Yep, absolutely. Uh, set things up a little bit. This is Edgewood ISD, and they have the big E that says Edgewood in the center of the field. The uh, north end zone to the right says Kennedy in it. The left uh, end zone, which is the north end zone as it runs north to south here. South end zone says Kennedy. North end zone says Memorial. And uh, turf field here this evening. We are on the home side of the stadium. We're looking at the Panther crowd across the way. Uh, just setting things up a little bit here. As Molly mentioned earlier, the wind is blowing right to left. Kennedy, the Rockets, they will be wearing all green here tonight. Green jerseys with green pants. White helmets with green trim. White numbers on the front. And a little white slash on the, on the kneecaps for Kennedy. For Medina Valley, they come out wearing all white. White pants and white shirts with orange numbers and orange letters on the front. Black helmets with the MV with the Panther going through it for Medina Valley. As both teams getting set to run out onto the field now as they emerge from the locker rooms. Uh, there's a track around the field here at Edgewood. Uh, nice, a nice stadium here. They got a, they got a beautiful setup here, and ready for a good game here. And as we mentioned earlier, we'll be back here in two weeks when the Panthers play uh, Memorial, the Minutemen. Yeah, beautiful stadium. And this, as you mentioned, the, the track this is used quite a bit for <coughs> during track season too, because it's just one of the one of the more outstanding uh, setups here in San Antonio. So this this stadium is is used quite a bit. All year round, yep, and and it shows because of your you know beautiful press box we're in, uh, the hospitality has ha, could not be better uh, every time you come here. So you know hats off to the hospitality people taking care of us as they always do. You know so thank you all very much for Edgewood and and their support of athletics yeah and this is a actually a very easy stadium to get to just come down 90 exit general mcmullen we hung one left and we're right here at the at the stadium just really really easy to get to not a long travel for the panthers any of you as old as i am you remember it very correctly because yeah. that used to be the only place you could come to get your driver's license or well, i came right here to get yep. my my test to get my license yeah, and it, uh, you got a view of downtown from here in the press box. You can see the Tower of America is very clearly right through there. Um, lights on here at the stadium. It is a 7 o'clock start tonight because they're playing on Thursday night. I think that that's the latest you can start a game on a school night. I'm, I'm assuming that's the case. Yes. Uh, the next Thursday night game that they play here in two weeks will also be at 7 o'clock. Next week is Uvalde. That is a home game for the Panthers. I believe it's homecoming, too. If and I'm correct, we will have a coaches show on Wednesday next week, night, next Wednesday. Yep, at Sammy's, uh, we will be live again for for a coaches show, and we'll be bringing you that. And Medina Valley's just come out on the field. Uh, Kennedy has come out on the field as well. Um, when we get some other the, news uh, around the district and around Medina Valley athletics, uh, Dwayne Garza sent me a text today that the cross country who we had. Yep. One week as part of the coaches show, yeah, Coach one first in district, boys and girls. So hats off to the Medina Valley Panthers cross country team for bringing home the championship. Yep. Boy, every every one of the kids, every one of the teams finished first. Fresh, both freshmen, both JV, and both A sweep. Wow. wow. And like we said, we had Coach Bermea on there on the show with us a few weeks ago. And we're going to go ahead and take a break for the National Anthem. Um, you're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we'll continue in just a moment. Facebook, like us, and you'll always get the latest on Panther sports and news from MVBN. Peerless Equipment, your South Texas irrigation experts. Peerless Equipment specializes in sales and service of irrigation equipment to the agricultural and wildlife industries. This includes hose reels, big guns, pivot systems, underground pipelines, turbine well pumps, booster pumps, motors, valves, and an inventory of much more. Stop by one of their locations in Hondo and Pearsall, or give them a call at 210-434-7867. Peerless Equipment, bringing water to you. 
Double T Outfitters offers deer, dove, turkey, quail, and exotic hunts in Southwest Texas on over 20,000 low fenced acres. They facilitate professional guide services, lodging, and fantastic meals while providing the best in Southwest hunting. Contact Double T Outfitters to find out details about their current package hunts. Contact owner Brett Ferguson at 210-413-1597 or online at DoubleTHunting.com. Qualifications, rules, and limitations apply. Rates, rewards, and restrictions may vary by account. Contact institution for details. Tickets, popcorn, and sodas. That'll be $35. Cash or debit? Debit! I mean, I'd like to use my debit card, please. Uh, Can I do it? Okay. All right! Swiping now! What if paying with your debit card was always this exciting? Kasasa Cashback is a free checking account that pays you for everyday debit card purchases every month you qualify. Plus, with ATM withdrawal fee refunds nationwide, that's a lot of extra cash to spend on whatever you like. Ask for free Kasasa checking at Community National Bank. Member FDIC. Nope. Nobody can design, create, or maintain your lawn better than 3D Landscaping and Irrigation. With over 17 years of experience, owner Ray Doyan and his crew take pride in their craftsmanship and service. They're fully insured, offer free estimates, and multiple references, so you know you're getting the best. 3D does landscaping, lawn maintenance, irrigation, tree installation, lighting, and more. Whether it's residential or commercial, 3D Landscaping and Irrigation has you covered. Give 3D a call at 830-985-9115 or find us online at threedlandscaping.com. We're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium as the National Anthem's ended. The colors are headed off the field and we will be ready for this football game. We still have to have the coin toss at midfield and then we'll be ready to get this game underway. Uh, Medina Valley looking to be 3-0 and in district after this. Edgewood looking, or Edgewood, um, Kennedy looking for their first uh, district victory of the season. Medina Valley coming in with a 4-1 and record. Um, their only loss was the first week of the season to Waco La Vega who was a very, very good football team, highly ranked in the state of Texas. And then uh, Beating Bernie High School, Hondo, Lockhart, and Bernie Champion uh, four in a row to, to come into this. And the Panthers are on a, on a good four-game win streak, looking to make it five here, coming off the bye week. Hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll see what kind of wrinkles Coach Sosa wants to throw into the mix here tonight. But I would look for a good dose of Gibson and also Pardo and Salas early in this football game and, I, and they'll throw uh, Her Hernandez in the, into that mix as well and I would look for Medina Valley to try to get out to a lead here the uh, captains for the Panthers number 10 Alec Child number 12 Cole Modling, number 84 make that number 64 for the Panthers Josh McAllister and number 30 is Chris Lopez for Kennedy there. Captains number five, Angel Sanchez, number 30. Ruben Tellis, number 12. Joshua Arguijo, and number three, Devin Salazar. Those are the captains for Kennedy as they're ready to do the coin toss here for both teams. Medina Valley will get to call the coin toss being the visiting team. But I cut us a little short there, Jared, in the pregame. I said we were coming off of a three-game winning streak. We're coming off of a yep. four-game winning streak. Yep. Yeah, the only loss was to Waco La Vega that first week, and then, you know, Medina Valley's reeled off four in a row here coming into this football game. And are we going to have our first game for the Panthers this year with no threat of rain? Yeah, that's that's a big one. We we actually had a little bit against Champion last yeah, week. Yeah, we've had every every game we've had some per uh, precipitation of some sort. Looks like the Panthers are going to win the toss, Jared. Yep, and and we're taking the ball. We're taking the ball, which is something we've seen them not do. We've seen them defer to the second half before, but looks like Medina Valley wants the ball first here and wants to try to jump on Kennedy in a hurry. And you had mentioned how easy of a trip it is coming here. It, it takes us, what, 25 minutes or so, yeah. and we'll be back here again in two weeks. And I'll sure take this rather than going and having to travel down 281 
and yeah. going to Marble to Falls or, or, or further yet, Dripping uh, Springs. Dripping Springs and having to mess with 281 on a Friday oh, or right. any type of, any time of the day. Yeah, you're exactly on that right. Road. As Medina Valley comes out on the field ready to uh, receive the kickoff, here you'll have, looks like they're going to send back Hernandez, Bippert, and okay. McCauley back deep to receive for the Panthers. And Hernandez, we saw from that JV squad straight up here, the middleman and, and deep man for Medina Valley, um, trying to show his skills off. He's got a lot of speed here. Um, a lot of times that, that deep man might not get the football, but we'll, we'll see what happens. And you so. see the front line yep. for the Panthers, too, kind of like your hands team out there. After that onside kick, they changed personnel real quick on that yep. onside kick against the champion Chargers. The Rockets ready to kick the ball away. Ball is teed up by number 37. Actually, that is not 37. Number 32, Daniel Garcia ready to kick it away. Boy, he sure doesn't get very far behind the football to get going here. He's and he's going to. Pop one up here that's going to be taken by McCauley at the 15-yard line. Starts up to the 20, 25, 30, trying to get to the edge, and he's run out of bounds right around the 34-yard line for a first and 10 from Medina Valley, and that's where they'll start first and 10 from the 34. Just pretty much just ran out of bounds on his own. The coverage was closing in on him. Number one uh, for the Rockets there, James Butler, forced him out of bounds. So you think it's a heavy dose of... Gibson here to start with, Jared. Yeah, I think they're gonna. I think you're gonna see a heavy dose of running the ball, but looks like Medina Valley is gonna come straight out here in the shotgun. They're gonna send two wide to the left side. Gibson and Hernandez look like the backs. They're gonna hand the ball to Gibson out of the shotgun. Who's gonna go forward to the 40? Gets up to about the 41, 42 yard line before he's brought down. But it's gonna be a pickup of eight yards, and it's gonna bring up second down and two. He's brought down by number 10. John Estrada for the Rockets. And Gibson just tried that right side of the line right over the right tackle for Medina Valley, and he picked up eight yards, gets up to the 42-yard line. Estrada is one of the strong linebackers there for the Rockets this evening. Out of the shotgun again here for the Panthers. They usually stay in that slot defense or offense. They're going to throw it out here, complete out to the left side, gets up across midfield and down to around the 48-yard line. That pass was complete to number 25 for the Panthers, Jacob Salas. Just tackled by number 12, Josh Arguello for the Rockets, but not before the yards needed for the first down. Good throw and a good catch by number 25, Salas. So first and 10, Medina Valley from the 48-yard line of Kennedy. Two plays, and they're in Kennedy territory here. The Panthers come out in the shotgun again. Two wide receivers out to the right here. Split backs. They're going to hand the ball off to Logan Masters, trying the right side. Gets down to the 45 and taken down around the 42-yard line, it looks like. A pickup of six yards. It's going to bring up second down and four. Estrada once again on the stop there for the Kennedy Rockets. So second and four upcoming here for the Panthers. Ball down to the 42-yard line of Kennedy. Panthers moving right to left here to start the ball game. Panthers sent two wide here. They stayed with this same formation pretty much the whole drive here. Out of the shotgun with split backs, they sent two wide receivers out to either side here to start. They sent a man in motion. It's going to be complete out to Masters in the flat area. Gets down to the 40, trying to get to the 35. Spins around, still on his feet, and he's finally taken down around the 30-yard line. It's going to be a first down for Medina Valley. He's wrestled down. Looked like number 80 for the Kennedy Rockets. That's Dylan Dominguez on the stop for Kennedy. Tried to get number 22 Masters out in some space, and he had a little bit of room. Got the yards needed and then some for the first down. Gets down to the 30-yard line where it'll be first and 10 Medina Valley. This time the Panthers will send a wide receiver out to each side. Split backs. They'll send Hernandez in motion. They're going to hand the ball off to Salas. 
going up the middle, and he's going to get down to about the 25-yard line to pick up a five yards. It'll bring up second and five for Medina Valley. Number 30, the weak side linebacker, Ruben Tellez, on the stop there for the Rockets. But a good run. We'll take five yards on first down. Yep, second down and five here. The Panther drive looking very good so far. Open this up. They've thrown the ball a couple of times. They've run it. Now they're going to go under center here. Gibson will be the lone back. Two wide receivers here for the Panthers, one on each side. Child under center takes the snap, hands the ball to Gibson up the middle. He's going to push forward for a pickup of two yards, and it's going to bring up third down and about the, two. Why the clock was ne wasn't moving. It was stuck at 9.55 for a long time. Second down, or makes it third down and three here for Medina Valley. They need to get down to the 20-yard line. The ball right now at the 24. We ran a play and a half with, 23. The with the clock not running. Yeah, clock down to 9.32 and counting here in the first quarter. Medina Valley on the opening drive of the football game. Out of the shotgun here. Right? Uh, they've come out of the pistol this time. Two wide receivers are going to hand the ball to Gibson. Tries to make a man miss, and he falls forward to the right at the 20-yard line. It's going to be very close to a first down. We'll see where they spot him. Number 68, Damian Ibarra on the stop as he hit Gibson in the backfield. And it's going to be fourth down in, in about half a yard here for Medina Valley. The ball, the nose of the football is just shy of the 20-yard line. Statement time here for your offensive line. Yeah, Medina Valley is going to go for it here as they hustle up to the line of scrimmage. Tight formation here. No wide receivers are going to hand the ball to Gibson. Cuts it up the field. He has a first down and more falling down toward the 15-yard line. A pickup of five yards on fourth and one, and the Panthers have it first and ten from the 15-yard line. Brought down by number 12 once again, Joshua Arguello, but not before Gibson gets the yards needed and about two more. It's going to be right on the 15-yard line. So first and 10 here for the Panthers. They can still pick up a first down at the 5. Down to the Kennedy 15. 8-18 to play here in the first quarter. A good drive here for the Panthers. Everything's been positive so far on this drive. And Medina Valley showing a new wrinkle here coming out in this They've been showing the shotgun and, and a couple of times the pistol formation here. Three wide receivers this time. Child pump fakes, throws to the end zone. McCulley, touchdown Medina Valley. A 15-yard touchdown pass from Alec Child to number two Ryan McCulley in Medina Valley quickly on top six to nothing with 7.53 to go in the first the quarter. The little pump fake throws to defensive back. He stared into the backfield a little bit too long. McCulley, McCulley just run a little flag pattern out to the corner. Wide open, good throw, and a good catch. Yep, and Dawson Grove on to try to tack on the extra point as the Panthers go with the swinging gate here. Marsh will be the holder for the Panthers as Grove ready to attempt the extra point. Good snap. The kick is up, and it is good. So with 7.53 to play here in the first quarter, your score, Medina Valley 7, Kennedy nothing. Uh, Medina Valley with a... Good drive that time, moving it downfield to score, and we'll take a quick break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we'll continue in just a moment. Let's get social. Like Medina Valley Broadcast Network on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at MV Broadnet and visit the official website at mvbn.net. Get the latest and join the conversation about all things Medina Valley sports. Come on, let's talk. Medina Valley Pediatrics is the only pediatric clinic in Medina Valley for kids from birth to 21. From sick to well care, ADHD treatment, sports physicals and immunizations, same day appointments and 24 hours a day by phone for after hours emergencies. Most major commercial insurances and Medicaid accepted. Medina Valley Pediatrics, 1028 Country Lane in Castroville. Call 830-355-2732, mv-pediatrics.com. Sammy's Restaurant and Havy's Alsatian Bakery, two legendary landmarks in Castorville. From breakfast to delicious hometown lunch specials and more, Sammy's satisfies your taste buds with the unique flavor of Castorville. And from fresh baked breads to pies and pastries, South Texans have made Havy's Alsatian Bakery a must to visit since 1940. Sammy's Restaurant, online at Sammy's Restaurant. Hades Alsatian Bakery, online at HadesBakery.com. We're back here at Edgewood. 
Veterans Stadium as Dawson Grove's kickoff brought to you by Grove Exxon and Oil Companies. It goes out of bounds at around the 15-yard line, and so Kennedy is going to take the ball first and 10 at the 30. And so Kennedy will come out on their first possession after that 15-yard touchdown pass from Alec Child to Ryan McCauley, putting Medina Valley on top 7 to nothing. And we'll see that Panther defense for the first time. Quarterback Sanchez comes out here for the Rockets as they come out of the shotgun. Less than three wide out to the left. They're going to hand the ball off. That's number three on the carry, and he's hit and dropped at the 30, maybe gained a yard on the play. That's Devin Salazar on the carry for the Rockets. Grant Snyder on the stop for the Panthers. Second down and nine upcoming, a pickup of a yard that time for Salazar. And the Rockets will huddle up and come back to the line for second down and nine. As you saw there, they tried to spread out the defense and then run the ball anyway. They came out with three wide to the left and sent one out to the right side. They'll come out with that same formation here. Out of the shotgun, Salazar the lone back to the left of Sanchez. Takes the snap. Sanchez is going to run the option left side. Pitches it out to Sanchez. And he's going to get taken down in the backfield. A loss of, make it three yards. It's going to bring up second down or third down and 12. Tanner Bippert on the stop there for the Panthers on the edge, along with number nine, Charlie Marsh. And that time, it, yeah, everybody in the backfield there for the Panthers. I mean, whether Sanchez kept the ball himself or pitched it to Zalazar, either way, they were getting taken down in the backfield. Yeah, because Snyder had the corner at the quarterback dead in his sights, forced him to pitch the ball, and that allowed uh, that allowed Bippert and Marsh on the tackle. That was a loss on the play, wasn't it? Yeah, loss of three yards. It's third down and 12 upcoming here for the Rockets. They'll send out two wide receivers on each side of the formation, four and all. Sanchez takes the snap, rolling out to the left side, and they're going to have a delay a game here, I believe, against Kennedy. Is a we were watching the clock, and it, it, it went down to zero. We were looked at each other, well, are they going to call it? And they let him snap the ball, but then they blew the whistle from the back judge. So third and 12 is going to become third and 15. And the back judge tonight is Danny Villalobos. Is that correct? Villalobos. 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 Did you go? Wait, no, did you go over? The, did, didn't you? No, we didn't. No, we, we didn't, didn't mention him. We we'll do have to, a referee we'll get call to you The referees in the game here. That's calling the game. So third and 15 upcoming here for the Rockets. Ball at their own 24-yard line. Takes the snap, looking to throw, steps up in the pocket. Now he's going to fire over the middle, over the fingertips of his intended receiver, number 12, Joshua Argijo, and it falls incomplete to be fourth down for the Rockets. That was your linebacker back in coverage. Tipped that ball as he had good coverage on the inside. That was Taylor Weir who tipped that ball away. Throw looked pretty good, Jared. He yeah. had him in the soft spot, but, but Weir went up and got it. Well, it away. Yeah, and it'll be fourth down, and, and Kennedy's going to have to punt here. So a good first series for Medina Valley as Bippert and Modulin back deep to receive. The punt is a way a high kick that's not a very good one. It's going to bounce and take a Medina Valley bounce and be downed at the Kennedy 31-yard line. So great, great field position here for Medina Valley. They will start first down and 10. At the Rocket 31-yard line. Ball was spotted at the 24. So a seven-yard punt for Kennedy. The ball bounced about the 40 and took a Medina Valley bounce back towards Kennedy's territory. Want to go over the officiating tonight. The referee is Gerald Green. The umpire, Jared Higdon. The head linesman, Timothy Loesch. The line judge, Robert Bally. And the back judge, Danny Villalobos. And so the Panthers come back out to the line of scrimmage here out of the shotgun. They'll send four wide receivers here. They're going to hand the ball to Gibson up the middle. Breaks free and gets down inside the 20, down to the 15. Or looks like they're going to spot him at the 13-yard line here. A big pickup for Gibson on first down. And it's going to be first and 10 Medina Valley from the Kennedy 13-yard line. Cornerback James Butler on the stop at... Gibson drug him for about six yards. Yeah, an 18-yard pickup for Gibson on first down. 5.21 to play here in the first quarter. Medina Valley knocking on the door again. They'll send three wide out to the right here. Child out of the shotgun. Gibson is his lone back. Leggett is 
out to the left. They're going to hand the ball. Gibson up the middle, breaks free. Touchdown, Medina Valley. A 13-yard touchdown run for James Gibson. And Medina Valley with a 13-0 lead. And Dawson Grove will come on to try to tack on the extra point. That big offensive line just opened that hole, and Gibson just strolled in for the Panthers. Made it look easy. Of course, they were benefited by a seven-yard punt, which set them up in great field position. Yeah, and two plays later, Medina, two, two Garrett, uh, Josh Gibson runs, and Medina Valley's in the end zone. Snap is back. Grove's kick is up, and it is good. So with five minutes to go in the first quarter, your score, Medina Valley 14, Kennedy 0. And we will go ahead and take a quick break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue in a moment. Broadcast Network. Once you start banking online, it all just starts to click. You get e-statements, online bill pay, 24-7 access, your whole financial picture right on your screen. Plus, with our bank, you get the local support you need to make it all work. Get clicking with online banking today. Come home to Castroville State Bank. Member FDIC. Visit us online at CastrovilleStateBank.com. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here at Edgewood Veterans Field as Dawson Grove's kick goes down to number 12, Aguillo. He fields it and brings it back up to, looks like the 20, seven yard line and that is where Kennedy will start first down and ten. Uh, Grove's kickoff brought to you by Royce Grove Exxon and Oil Companies. First and ten Kennedy their second drive of the ball game. They'll come out here in the gun with split backs. Sanchez takes a snap gonna hand the ball off this is number 15 on the carry and he has some running room gets it up to the 35 yard line pickup of eight yards it's gonna bring up second down and two and that was uh, Nathan Martinez on the carry. Number one Dawson Grove on the stop and that time Jared they spread the Panthers across the field there with the wide receivers and just a little trap upside in the middle caught the Panthers off guard. Number one Grove with the stop. So second down and two upcoming here for the Rockets. That's really that's been their best play so far. They went three and out the first time against Medina Valley. They'll come out here out of the gun with split backs again. They'll send two wide out to the left, one to the right side as they move left to right. 4-10 to go first quarter. Medina Valley up 14 to nothing. Takes the snap, hands the ball off. Martinez again, and this time he is hit and dropped for no gain. Good play that time by the Panther defense. It's going to bring up third down and two. Grove on the initial hit, and then he was finished off by Santos and Snyder. So no gain, and... Panthers trying to get off the field here on third down again. Early in the ball game, but this is a crucial third down for Kennedy. Yeah, it's, it's Medina Valley scored on both of their drives, and Kennedy hasn't shown the ability to be able to stop them yet in the ball game. So on third down, the Rockets come to the line of scrimmage here. Come out in the pistol. They send wide receivers out to the left. They're going to take the snap, looking to throw, left-handed passer under pressure now he's rolling back out to the left side of the field and he is going to get sacked back at the 10 yard line looks like they'll spot him with forward progress up to the 15 but that is a huge huge loss for Kennedy and it's going to bring up fourth down and a mile. Hecker was putting the pressure on him early caused him to change the field and he just retreated back towards his end zone and still Perry right there with the quarterback snap with the quarterback sack and You've got to get rid of that ball. You yep. cannot take that sack. No, you got to throw the ball away and keep the yardage here, especially after your last punt only went seven yards. And number three, Devin Salazar is going to be punting. He's going to be standing at his one-yard line. Bippert and Modulin back deep to receive. The Panthers come after him. He shanks this punt. It's going to go out of bounds at the 13-yard line. 
And it is going to be first and 10 Medina Valley from the Kennedy 13. Wow. 21, Fillinger was putting pressure yep. on him and he had to kick it a little early. And he startled him and that one I don't even think went seven yards. No. It didn't even, it, it, it might have got back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think a three yard punt right there. Wow. That set shot for the Panthers in excellent field position here to put up their third score of the first quarter. And so the Panthers come straight out to the line of scrimmage here. 2.24 to play here in the first quarter. Child out of the shotgun. Four wide receivers here for the Panthers. Low snap, but Child rolling out to the right side. He's going to throw on the run to the end zone. Low throw. Did he catch it in the end zone? No, it's going to be an incomplete pass. There's a flag down at the 14-yard line. That came in real, real late, and usually that's a, a lineman downfield. And that's what they're calling ineligible downfield against Medina Valley. And so that will move the Panthers back. And, you know, Alec Child, that time he rolled out to the right. He had all day to throw the football, had a lot of time out there. He just underthrew his receiver in the end zone. The snap was a little bit low. Yep. Kind of caused him to be off kilter right from the start. But he did regroup. But just, you know, rolling out to his right just didn't get enough on it. But it would have been nullified anyways with the illegal man downfield. Yeah, so it's going to be first down at 15 here for the Panthers. They'll send three wide receivers out to the right. Leggett isolated by himself out to the left side. Child out of the gun. Gibson is loaned back to the right. Takes the snap. Hands the ball. Gibson. Or actually, Child's going to keep it himself going around the right side. Gets up to the down to the 20. Inside the 20 to about the 19-yard line. Gets his five yards back. It's going to bring up second down. Make, we'll give him a four-yard gain. It'll bring up second down. The whole left side of the defense for the... Rockets are going to get credited for that tackle. 77 was leading the charge for Kennedy on that play. So it'll bring up second down and 11 here for Medina Valley. Child out of the gun again. Four wide receivers here. Takes the snap. Looking to throw. Sets up. Fires McCulley. Complete. Trying to shake away. And he fights his way down inside the 5 to the 2-yard line. Where it'll be first and goal Medina Valley. Number one, James Butler. Hanging on for dear life as McCauley tried to get across the goal line, but they're going to mark him one yard short. Yeah, he caught that at the five, and he just tried to keep spinning his way and pull his feet free, but he got down to the two. It'll be first and goal in Medina Valley. He wanted that second score. And he, here is Gibson, the lone back, child under center. Takes the snap, looking to throw. Fires one corner of the end zone. Leggett goes up. Did he pull it down? They did. Touchdown, Medina Valley. Garrett Leggett goes up, and he pulled that down. I think he secured it against his helmet, didn't he? He, he was using his big body. They threw the ball at number one, James Butler, and there's about a four or five-inch height difference, and he just, like you said, he pulled it down. I think he trapped it yeah, on top of the Kennedy right guy's right. helmet yeah. or his helmet. Yeah, and, and, I mean, touchdown, Medina Valley. That's the second touchdown pass for Alec Child on the evening. And Dawson Grove on to try to tack on the extra point. Ball spotted at the 10. Takes the snap. Kick is up and it is good. So with a minute four to go in the first quarter, your score Medina Valley 21, Kennedy 0. We'll take a quick break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football and we'll continue in just a moment. This is MVBN, the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Weather in South Texas is unpredictable. That's why our neighbors in Medina Valley trust Four Winds Air Conditioning and Heating for residential and commercial service. Four Winds provides maintenance, repairs, equipment upgrades, and heat load calculations for new construction design and installation. Four Winds offers financing on anything over $300. Family owned and operated since 2006. Four Winds Heating and Air Conditioning. Call 210-892-2925 or on the web at number 4windsacandheat.com. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium as Dawson Grove ready to boot it away for the Panthers. This kickoff brought to you by Royce Grove Oil Company and Exxon Stations. Number 20 and number 12 for Kennedy back deep to receive. That's Joshua Argijo. And number 20, Justin Ariaga. As Grove will boot it away. End over end kick that's going to be fielded and 
then it goes out of bounds. But he touched it. He touched it. Wow, the nightmare and that, continues for the Rockets. Yeah, and that will go out of bounds. It will be spotted at the 10-yard line of Kennedy. So awful field position again for the Rockets to start with at their own 10. Number 12, Aguillo just made a bad decision. Is That ball was probably going to go out of bounds, and he tried to field it, and momentum carried him and the ball out of bounds, and that's just the special teams have not been a friend of the Rockets tonight so far. Two bad punts. Two punts and now, for 10 yards. Yeah, and now a total of 10 yards. Yeah. yeah, and now a missed cue on the kickoff. Yeah. So, so the Rockets will come out here first down and 10 from their own 10-yard line. Sanchez out of the shotgun here. They'll send three wide receivers out to the left side. His lone back is Devin Salazar, and Sanchez rolling out left, throws complete up to the, now they're going to call that incomplete. I think he was bobbling it as he went out of bounds and never completed the catch. And that's going to go as an incompletion to bring up second down and 10. Not, uh, Weir was the Panther on coverage, and he hit him as soon as the ball was delivered, and the play was away from us, but right away you could see the referee motion and the ball was juggled, and then naturally we saw it hit the ground after he, the, the player went to the ground. So second and ten from the ten. They'll come out here in the I formation. Sanchez under center, takes the snap, hands the ball off, trying to get up the middle here. He's going to get a few yards, maybe gets up to the 13-yard line. Looks like they'll spot him at the 15 for forward progress sake, and it's going to bring up third down and five. That look, looks like number... 63 Hecker and number 88 Steel Perry on the stop there for the Panthers. 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter as the Rockets will come back to the line of scrimmage here on third down and five. Ball spotted at their own 15 yard line. They'll come out in the shotgun here. They'll send three wide to the left, one out to the right. Sanchez takes the snap he's going to roll out left side looking to throw throws on the run complete number 15 trying to get up to the 20 stretches the ball out and he's going to get a first down that was number 15 on the reception Nathan Martinez a uh, gain of five yards it's going to be first and 10 for Kennedy well they haven't signaled it yet now they do first and 10 they give it to him there Devin Stubing on the coverage for the Panthers and it looked like he had him right at the sticks needed. The yep. receiver just got enough to get to the first down. That's their first first down of the ball game. And that will end the first quarter of play. So your score after one quarter, Medina Valley 21, Kennedy 0. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet. And we will continue in just a moment. M-V-B-N. Sometimes it seems like banks try to make things too complex. At Broadway Bank, they're removing the complications and offering services some other institutions won't, like the all-new Broadway Bank Free Checking. Open it on your mobile phone in as little as 90 seconds. It's fast, easy, digital, and free. Discover the all-new Free Checking and other ways they're innovating local banking by visiting Broadway Bank at 1006 North Fiorella Street or call 830-538-9023. Free checking subject to approval. Conditions and restrictions apply. Tondre Gwynn Funeral Home in Castroville, Texas has been providing funeral services to families in the Medina Valley and surrounding areas for many generations. Tondre Gwynn Funeral Home is proud to support the broadcast by the Medina Valley Broadcast Network for the athletes and students participating in this event. Go Panthers! Tondre Gwynn Funeral Home, Castroville, Texas. You may view obituaries at Tondre, T-O-N-D-R-E dash Gwynn, G-U-I-N-N dot com or visit the Facebook page of Tondre Gwynn Funeral Home home to view funeral notices. We're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. First play of the second quarter as we switch sides. Kennedy going right to left now as they go from the shotgun and run the ball for 12-yard pickup and it's going to be first and 10 here for Kennedy. That's our best play of the ball game so far here for the Rockets. <laughs> Cole Modulin on the stop there for the Panthers on the play, but that was the first, that was the longest play from scrimmage so far for the Rockets. So first and 10, ball spotted at their own 32 yard line as Kennedy comes out in the I formation. Sanchez takes the snap, they're going to hand the ball off, looking for some running room as Martinez and he's going to get brought down at the 32, maybe 
got a yard on the play. We'll see exactly where they spot him, but nothing really going there. Trace Ferguson on the stop there for the Medina Valley Panthers. So it's going to bring up second down and 10. They'll give him no gain on the play. And so Sanchez will bring in the play from the sideline and come right to the line of scrimmage here out of the shotgun. They'll send three wide out to the right here. Sanchez takes a snap, rolling out, looking to throw. Now he steps up, and he's going to throw on the run. Has a man deep. It's caught down at the 40-yard line, and he gets out of bounds around the 32-yard line of Medina Valley. Big pass and catch that time for the Rockets, and they have it in Medina Valley territory for the first time this evening. Boxing on the coverage, and it looked like he went for the interception, tried to cut in front of him, and it got through him, got to the receiver. Good throw and a good catch on the sidelines. That puts the Rockets in Panthers territory. Well, and, you know, Sanchez stepped up there and bought himself a little time. He got very close to getting to the line of scrimmage before he threw the football. On first down and 10, the Rockets come to the line of scrimmage. Sanchez changing things up to his receivers, takes a snap, going to hand the ball off. This is Salazar trying to get to the outside. It's strung out, and he is brought down for a loss on the play of a couple. It's going to bring up second down and 12. Steubing wouldn't give an inch inside, forced him back outside, right into the waiting arms of number 34, Taylor Weir. Loss on the play. So second and 12 upcoming here. Ball back to the 35-yard line of Medina Valley. 9.47 to play here in the first half. They're asking to reset the 25-second clock, so they do. Two wide receivers to the left here for the Rockets. One man out to the right. Sanchez out of the gun, looking to throw under pressure. Throws on a run complete up to the 35, down to the 30 before he's brought down. Pickup of seven. We'll give him a pickup of about six yards. It's going to bring up third down and seven here for Kennedy. Steel Perry on the stop there for the Panthers, along with number 16, Jared Marty. This is a big possession here for the Rockets. Down three scores already. They finally have the ball in Panther territory on the 30. They need to put some points on the board. Yeah, and you would, you would imagine this is four down territory for them also down here inside the 35-yard line of Medina Valley. Ball at the 30, three wide out to the right. Sanchez out of the gun. Takes the snap. He's going to roll out looking to throw. Fires on the move, and that is almost intercepted. In fact, it hit a man in the back. Three. Uh, well, there were three guys right there, and one of them wasn't looking for the ball. It, I thought it hit him in the back. One of them had his hands open waiting for it, and they, they were all, I mean, there were three Medina Valley players right there for the football, and no Rockets receivers, and it's going to bring up fourth down. Fortunately for the Rockets, a white jersey didn't end up with that football. No, because if he would have, that might have been six points the other way. Going to bring up now the fourth down. Fourth and seven upcoming here for the Rockets. Out of the shotgun, they'll send three wide out to the right. One to the left side here on fourth down. Ball to 30. Sanchez takes the snap, drops back, looking to throw. He's going to fire one to the end zone deep, and it is going to be incomplete. Over through his receiver. Intended man was number 10 down there. Looks like John Estrada. Dawson Grove, number one on the coverage. And the quarterback just heaved that up and was hoping his receiver could come underneath it, but that was a ball thrown that just wasn't catchable. Yeah, that was number 20, Ariaga, the intended receiver for Kennedy, but it is a turnover on downs, and Medina Valley will get it first and 10 at their own 30-yard line. So the Panthers bend it a little bit, but didn't break as they stopped. Turnover on downs now for the Panthers. Three possessions, three touchdowns so far for Medina Valley. Yeah, that's right, and the Panthers will come out to the line of scrimmage here. They'll come out in the shotgun again. They'll go with two wide on either side of the formation here. Four wide receivers in all for the Panthers. Gibson, the lone back here, takes a snap, fires it complete out to the left side, looking for some room to run. That's number 80 for the Panthers on the completion, Aaron Sotelo. A pickup of looks like five yards. It'll bring up second and five for Medina Valley. It was brought down by number 22. Uh, that's Ilaro... Ilablio Mangalese. Mang 
Manga Giannis, I think. Is that the L's are... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Child looking to throw with time. Fires over the middle. Complete. That's number 25 for the Panthers. Jacob Salas on the reception gets across midfield and down to the Kennedy 44 or 46 yard line rather to be first in Tamadina Valley. Child was looking for number 22 doing just a streak down the sidelines. Masters good coverage down the field. He looked off Masters. Hit Salas coming across the middle. That's a good read there by number and 10. Good Child. job by the offensive line. They gave him a lot of time back there to be able to stand and, and look through his progression of receivers. They're going to fire it out to Gibson in the flat with some room to run up across the 40, lowers his shoulder and gets down to the 42 yard line. First down from Medina Valley. Good pickup on the throw and catch by Gibson. Yeah, number one, James Butler wishes he wouldn't have made that tackle because Gibson lowered his head. Butler went a little bit lower, but he did take the the worst part of that collision. He's he's down now. And it's going to be second down and a yard to go here. And yeah, we do he, have he, a... He tried he tried to get up, but then, you know, he, he was kind of grabbing his back. Something kind of was bothering him a little bit. Yeah, and, you know, Medina Valley, um, Gibson's one of those players that we've talked about before, gets himself ahead of steam, and he is not somebody you want to stand in front of and try to tackle head on because he will get lower than you. I just and give the size difference. There's no comparison between him and number one. I give Butler credit yep. for standing in there and, yeah. and sticking with him because that takes a it's lot a, of a lot of a lot of mentality to, to hang in there like he did. He didn't back out of the way. He went down and tried to make the play and he yep. did make the play. This is, a, this is a guy in Gibson that we have seen run over linebackers and, and bigger players Throughout the season, we've seen him carry three and four guys down the field for an extra five yards at times. Um, so, I mean, he, he stood in there. That's actually that's actually number twelve. Yeah. And wow. And that, he's he, he's a he's one that's in there on the offensive side too, Aguillo. Well, and I've noticed their their nose tackle, Ethan Valdez, is also their left tackle. So they have a couple of guys that do play both ways. And that's one thing the Panthers have a luxury of yep. of not really having that have anybody go both ways and being rested on both sides of the ball. 7.06 to go in the first half. Medina Valley will have its second down and one yard to go. The ball is spotted at the Kennedy 37 yard line. Child out of the shotgun, takes the snap, looking to throw. Fires left side complete to leg it. Down across the 30, down to the 25, still trying to pull free and he falls forward. I think he finally stepped out of bounds. Looks like at the 26 yard line. They'll that actually time. mark him at the 28, first yeah. down from Medina Valley. That time it was number one Butler that ran him out of out of bounds, but not before a good throw and a good catch. Good run after the catch. They kind of they moved him back a little bit as we thought. I thought he was inside the 25, but yep. they said he did step out at the 27. And so the Panthers come back to the line of scrimmage here, first and 10. They'll send three wide out to the right here, out of the shotgun. New thing we've seen from the Panthers here in this ball game. Child looking to throw left side, complete out to McCulley. Tried to make the first man miss, but he couldn't as he's wrestled out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Pickup of six yards. It's going to bring up second down and four. I had numbers on the side, but threw it to the short side. Single man coverage out there, one-on-one, -on -one, and the Panthers won that battle. McCulley out wrestled number 10 for the ball. And like I mentioned, Medina Valley doing something a lot different here. They've been showing that shotgun formation the majority of this ball game so far. Uh, something new from the Panthers we haven't really seen a lot of in previous weeks. Out of the gun again. Child rolling out right side looking to throw. Pump fakes. Throws on the run complete down to the 11-yard line. And it's going to bring up a first down and 10 for Medina Valley. That pass was complete to number 80, Aaron Sotelo. And a first down for the Panthers. Number 22 on the stop there. Uh, and he threw that in double coverage. Yeah. Sotelo just wrestled that ball away from number 22. So the Panthers back to the line here out of the shotgun. Three wide to the left again. Gibson is the lone back to the left of Child. Medina Valley moving left to right. Child rolling out left side looking to throw. Fires on the run. Complete and he gets down close to the goal line. I think he's going to be about a yard, maybe two short. Panthers can still get a first down and not score, and he's right at the marker for the first down. 
That's number 25, Jacob, Jacob Solace. Solace for Medina Valley. A pickup of eight yards on the play. It's going to bring up second down and two to go. The ball spotted at the three-yard line. And as Mari mentioned, if they, they can get down inside the one to get a first down here without, without scoring a touchdown. I think if Gibson gets far enough to get the first down, they're not going to stop him from the goal line, I don't think. No. Child out of the gun. Takes a snap. Rolling out right. Looking to throw. Fires complete. To, oh, did he catch it? He did, but he's not in the end zone when he made the catch. He bobbled it, got knocked down, and caught it on his back at the one-yard line. That was, that was Pardo. Yeah, that was number 23, Wesley Pardo. Great, a great job to catch the football, but a good job by the Kennedy defender there when the ball got there to lay him out and kept him from getting a touchdown. Yeah, that was number one, Butler, on the stop. And they're not going to – well, they give him a first down. It's going to be first and goal. They said he got enough to get the – the first down marker, yep. but just not score the touchdown. So first and goal for Medina Valley from the one-yard line. It's one of those cases where if he falls backwards, he scores, but he fell forward and he didn't score. They'll come out here in the wing tee. They're going to hand the ball. Gibson trying the right side, and he is going to get in for the touchdown. Touchdown Medina Valley makes it 27 to nothing. A one-yard run by James Gibson. That's his second touchdown of the evening. And Medina Valley pinning an extra point. It's going to could be up you know, 28 points here with 3.30 to go here in the first quarter, or first half, rather. You have Steel Perry that centers the ball. You have Marsh that holds it, and Grove that does the kicking. So Dawson Grove trying to attack on the extra point here. Good snap. Kick is up, and it is good. So with 3.29 to go in the first half, your new score, Medina Valley 28, Kennedy nothing. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue in just a moment. This is MVBN, the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. QRC Health Mart Pharmacy is the pharmacy for Castroville. QRC Health Mart Pharmacy has an experienced staff with over 20 years of patient care, offering a full-service pharmacy for all of your prescription, specialty, diabetic, and over-the-counter needs, including free blood pressure monitoring and a convenient drive through Most major insurance companies and plans accepted. Open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday and 9 to 1 on Saturday. QRC Health Mart Pharmacy, here to stay. 408 Highway 90 West in Castroville. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. Medina Valley with a 28 to nothing lead over Kennedy is Dawson Grove getting ready to kick it off. And the kickoff brought to you by Royce Grove Oil Company and Exxon Stations. Yeah. We're Real quick, Jared, I want to also throw out there that uh, QRC Health Mart is now open uh, with their new indoor uh, counter area. So go by and see QRC Health Mart. Grove with a high end over end kick taken at the 12-yard line. They're going to try a reverse here. Gets up to the 20, 25, and he is wrestled down by number 44 for the Panthers at the 28-yard line. It'll be first and 10, Kennedy. Isaac Santos on the stop there for Medina Valley. They tried the reverse that time, did Kennedy and it did not uh, work to the extent I think they wanted it to, and first and 10 from their own 28-yard line. And they actually had a pretty decent drive going last time. They completed a long pass. Uh, Medina Valley was able to turn them away on fourth down and get the turnover on downs, but uh, maybe the Rockets will have something to build on here. 3.22 to go before halftime. Both teams with three timeouts remaining. Kennedy out of the shotgun. They're going to hand the ball to Salazar, looking to find some running room, and he is gobbled up at the 20, looks like the 26-yard line, a loss of two yards. It's going to bring up second and 12. Weir and Hecker on the stop there for the Panthers. And when you've got an aggressive defense like Medina Valley, the worst thing you can do is exactly what he did, dance around in the backfield. you got to hit your hole. I know there ain't much there, but you got to take what you get. Yeah, you're exactly right, Mari. When there is a little bit of hole here against this Panther defense, you have to get through it and get upfield in a hurry. And, you know, Salazar trying to dance around and find a little bit of running room and wasn't able to find it, and Medina Valley just collapsed on top of him. Out of the shotgun here again. They'll actually come out of the pistol here with two backs. Looking to throw. Sanchez fires over to the right side, complete, and he's brought down. It looks like he's going to be about 
Ooh, they're going to give him a good ball spot here, and that's probably going to be a first down. I thought he was about a yard shy, but first down for for Kennedy up to the Medina Valley 38-yard line. Stubing on the coverage, but he just got enough for the first down as the tackle took him further downfield. Yeah, and that's a big conversion. Kennedy definitely needed that right there. Yeah, you're not you're not kidding, and it'll be first and ten here for the Rockets. 2:13 to go here in the first half. As the Rockets come to the line of scrimmage here with split backs out of the gun. Two wide out to the left, one to the right side here as they move right to left. They're going to hand the ball off. Martinez finds a little bit of running room as he cuts back to the outside of the field and he gets up to midfield before he's run out of bounds. A pickup of 12 yards. It'll be first and 10, Kennedy. Stops the clock with a minute and 52 left as Kennedy's trying to put some points on the board before half, trailing 28 to nothing. Uh, Tanner Bippert on the stop there for the Panthers outside wide, but he got to the edge, Jared, and got some positive yards, 12 yards and a first down. Yeah, and got out of bounds. They do have three timeouts remaining here, and minute 52 with three timeouts, that is an eternity. We've seen we've seen a minute in a ball game last 10 minutes, you know, on a real clock before. Three wide out to the left here. Sanchez out of the shotgun. Takes a snap, rolling out, looks to throw, fires complete out to Martinez, and he's going to be wrestled down at the Medina Valley 48-yard line. Steubing on the stop there for the Panthers. That's number 14, Devin Steubing. Taylor Weir also there for the Panthers. And they'll actually spot him at the 47 to pick up a three yards. It's going to bring up second down and seven. Clock ticking under a minute 30 to go here. Kennedy not showing any urgency here, not taking any timeouts. They'll come to the line of scrimmage here. Two wide receivers on each side of the formation. Sanchez out of the gun. Looks over his offense. Now he's ready. Takes a snap looking to throw. Fires left side high incomplete. In and out of the hands of his intended receiver, number 82, Jack LaRue. Ball was thrown high, but LaRue got his hands on it. Just couldn't come down with the football. Yeah, number 42, <coughs> Dante Henry on the coverage there outside for the Panthers. Would have been close to first down yardage right there. He yeah. Actually, I think he might have had the first down if he could have brought that ball in. It'll be third down and seven to go here for the Rockets. A minute nine to play first half. Kennedy out of the gun here. They'll send four wide receivers, two on each side. Sanchez to throw. Pump fakes once. Steps up. Throws deep down the left side. Let his man out of bounds. Um, there was some contact down there by Dante Henry, but that ball was overthrown. He had no chance to catch it, so no interference call on the play to bring up fourth down. That was a good job in coverage by Henry out there by himself. Used that sideline as another defender and forced the receiver to go out of bounds. Even I think if he if he might have caught if he would have caught it, he might have still been out of bounds. So a good job downfield by number 42. Minute two to go in the first half here, and Kennedy ready to punt it away. They punt it twice on the evening for a combined 10 yards here, and we'll see if Salazar is able to uh, they actually put a different punter in here this time, and that is a better kick. Fair catch called for and made by Moduling at the 20-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Medina Valley with 54 seconds to go. That was number 32 on the punt. Daniel Garcia for Kennedy, a much, much better punt that time. Definitely, and, and the Panthers won the toss, took the ball, so Kennedy will receive. The second half kickoff, if you're the Panthers now with 54 seconds left, you have your full allotment of timeouts with three. Do you try to pull more, put more points on the board, see what happens on first down, and then go from there? Well, or are you comfortable with your 28-point lead? Well, I think they kind of want to see what they can do here under a minute with three timeouts and see if they can move the ball here. It might be time for Medina Valley to see what they have. Child looking to throw, first down deep, makes a catch, and that's going to be a touchdown for Medina Valley. That is Logan Masters, 80-yard pass and catch from child to masters in Medina Valley. <laughs> we said we wanted to see what they had. Well, and Took and 12 seconds off and the board. And I said, let's see what you can get on first down. You saw number 22 out there wide, which they've lined him up wide before. They got him out in space. And we have saw all year, if number 22 gets some space, you're very seldom going to catch him. And he just got behind the, the defensive backs as they were staring into the backfield. The play action worked, and he was wide open. He had a good throw by Child. I mean, he led he led uh, Masters in stride, hit him in stride. 80-yard touchdown pass from Child to Masters and Grove. There's a low snap, but Marsh gets it down, and it is good. So with 40 seconds to go here in the first half, your score, Medina Valley 35, 
and Kennedy Zero. We'll, we'll go ahead and take a quick break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue in just a moment. M-V-B-N. At North Park Chevrolet in Castro, we offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. Back here at Edgewood Memorial Stadium. Uh, you're listening to Panther Football. This is brought to you by North Park Chevrolet. Uh, Chevrolet car repairs and truck service near San Antonio and Casterville. It is your Casterville Chevrolet dealership for all your sales, service, and parts need, and we always thank the sponsors yep. for making and it possible to get on here and, and bring I'm you these games. And I'm going to have to patronize that sponsor tomorrow because I need a dash cover for my 92 GMC Sierra four-wheel drive pickup. The dash is a little cracked, so I need <laughs> I need a cover to cover it up. As Groves' kick is away, high end over end kick that's going to be taken at the 11. They're going to reverse it again, going around to the right side of the field, looking for running room. Medina Valley had it covered, but breaks a couple of tackles, gets up to the 25-yard line. It'll be first and ten Kennedy from there. That was Gregory San Miguel, number two on the carry there on the return for the Rockets. I'm not sure who the young man was that <coughs> was first there on the tackle, but there was three or four Panthers there. And that if you stay in your if if you stay in your lanes like the Panthers have been disciplined on the kickoffs, that reverse shouldn't bother you if you if you don't peek into their Secondary or they're back right there and you keep your lane composures and the Panthers have shown twice that they're staying at home. So first and ten from the 27 yard line. There's 29 seconds to go here and we'll see what if Kennedy's going to try to heave ho here and it looks like they're going to. Sanchez going to fire over the middle complete up to the 39 yard line and he's brought down. That was number 82 on the reception, Jack LaRue. Taylor Weir on the stop and the Panthers will give Kennedy that all night long here. Yeah, absolutely. Back to the line here. 14 seconds to go. Sanchez rolling out to his right, looking to throw. Sets up, fires back across his body, complete to LaRue. Makes the first man miss, and he's down to the 35. But they are trying to get on the ball here, and the Kennedy finally took their last time out here. Did the ball come loose at All the right, end of that? Grant they did. Sn Medina Valley's well, got the football. And Grant Snyder hitting from behind. And the ball came loose, and it was actually Grant Snyder that came up with the football also. Well, you know, Mario, I was looking. I saw him get hit and go down. I started looking at the clock to see if they were going to have enough time or take a timeout. And I look back, and there's a pile there. Medina Valley's guys are jumping up and down. And Medina Valley has the ball with a second to go at their own 34-yard line. Yeah, Snyder chased him down from behind, and the, uh, the receiver wasn't expecting him to come up that quick. And he forced the fumble, and he actually recovered it. One second left. Yeah, and, and it looks like Medina Valley is just going to take a knee here and get into the locker room with a 35 to nothing lead. Child will go under center, and he will put his knee down, and that is going to end your first half of play. Your score at halftime, Medina Valley 35, Kennedy nothing. We'll take a break, and we will come back. You're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we will continue in just a moment. This is MVBN, the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Headed out to the game? Then make a stop at your local Valley Mart convenience store. With 12 area locations, Valley Mart is always right around the corner. Fuel yourself and your vehicle with quality branded gas and diesel, snacks and fountain drinks. Always convenient, well lit with clean restrooms. Valley Mart, family owned and operated since 1984 and a proud supporter of Medina Valley Athletics and area youth sports for over 30 years. 
Peerless Equipment, your South Texas irrigation experts. Peerless Equipment specializes in sales and service of irrigation equipment to the agricultural and wildlife industries. This includes hose reels, big guns, pivot systems, underground pipelines, turbine well pumps, booster pumps, motors, valves, and an inventory of much more. Stop by one of their locations in Hondo and Pearsall or give them a call at 210-434-7867. Peerless Equipment, bringing water to you. Here at Medina Valley Broadcast Network, we love all sports. We currently broadcast football, volleyball, basketball, softball, and baseball. We not only serve Medina Valley, we also can broadcast other schools in the area in multiple sports. If your business is interested in having us broadcast a single game or a season, and you want to be part of the action, contact Jeff Stivers at 830-931-4504 or email him at jeff at mvbn.net. Security State Bank has one simple goal, to be the best bank possible to the families and businesses of South Texas. We believe in superior customer service, active community involvement, fair and honest business ethics, and loyalty. We've been in Castorville for a year now, and we've enjoyed growing with you. Come by 1726 Highway 90 East, or call us at 830-538-9898. A real person will answer, because that's how we do business, with common courtesy and uncommon service. Bank online at securitystbk.com. Security State Bank, South Texas. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. At North Park Chevrolet in Castorville. We offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. You're watching Medina Valley Football. <laughs> this is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here at Edgewood Memorial Stadium where Medina Valley with a 35 to nothing lead over the Kennedy Rockets at halftime. And this game has started out very, very well for Medina Valley. They've had the ball six times. They scored on five of those, and the only one they didn't score on was after they recovered the fumble with a second to go and just put a knee down to get into the end zone. But it all started off with a 15-yard touchdown pass from Alec Child to Ryan McCauley after a three and out by Kennedy and a seven-yard punt. Medina Valley had the ball at, their, at the Kennedy 31-yard line. James Gibson got two carries, and he was in the end zone to make it 14 to nothing. The... Kennedy would again go on a three and out after a big sack of the quarterback, a three-yard punt, and then Medina Valley would go ahead and put the ball into the end zone again to make it 30 or make it 21 to nothing. And then we saw James Gibson on a one-yard run a little later for his second touchdown, and then we saw the 80-yard pass from Alec Child to um, Logan Masters for 80 yards, and the other one that I, I didn't mention in there was the Alec Child touchdown pass to Garrett Leggett where he went up over the top of the defender, brought it down and pinned it against his shoulder or his helmet there, and managed to score the touchdown. So Medina Valley, 5 for 5 on possessions there, and like I mentioned, the only possession they didn't score was with one second to go. They put a knee down on the ball to get into halftime. This game could not be going any better for the Panthers. Well, you had three scoring Passes, am yep. I correct? And yeah, three two, passes, two runs. two runs. So they balance two, things out pretty well. Three different receivers. Yep. Masters, yep. McCauley, and Leggett. Yep. And then Gibson with the two running up the middle. Uh, but the special teams have been a nightmare for the Rockets Absolutely. tonight. The first two punts, one went three yards and one went ten, and that set up Medina Valley after they took the opening drive and scored. The next two possessions... Ten yards on two punts. Medina Valley had the ball inside the 30 on both possessions and, and had an easy field to manipulate down for the score. And all the possessions for the Panthers have ended up in seven points. Dawson Grove doing a good yep. job of, of making sure that they go right down the middle. A great job on that last one by Charlie Marsh. As the snap was a little low, he got the ball down. Grove got it through. And... All you can say right now is there's no rocket red glare <laughs> in the first half for the Kennedy Rockets. I can tell you oh that. Oh my! The, no. the, 
the, the turbo boosters or whatever charges the red glare, they're not working. No, and, and you know, Medina Valley's defense played played very well there in the first half. They had a turnover on downs. They created the fumble there before the halftime. Uh, but, you know, they've allowed one big play to Kennedy on that pass play that went for about 40 yards. But other than that, their defense has been very sound. They've given up a few yards here and there. But they've had they forced Kennedy to have to punt the football, and they've made a punt three times. They had the turnover on downs, and then the, the fumble there at the end of the half. But a, a good showing so far for that defense for Medina Valley. And I also like to point out that the offensive line for the Panthers is doing an outstanding job. They're giving Alec Child a lot of time to throw the football, and they're opening up some big holes for Gibson to run well, through. Well, and this is the first time that I'll give Alec Child credit for going through his progressions yep. because he's looked off some receivers a couple of times and not just got to the the offensive line thinking okay i am going to throw it right here no matter whether he's covered or not he's looked off the receivers and two of them have resulted in touchdowns yeah and, and we saw that earlier this season especially against champion last week where he knew who he was going to before he even snapped the football. Never looked away from it. Sometimes he threw it in a double and triple coverage because of that. I think a lot of it has to do with some of the offense Medina Valley runs because they don't have a lot of guys running pass routes when you come from that slot T formation. You have one or two guys running routes, and if he's rolling out to one side, that eliminates half the field right there. But still, to throw it into that kind of coverage, just throw the football away or tuck it and run for as many yards as you can. He's doing a better job of not forcing things here. Like you said, looking off receivers. But another thing Medina Valley's done here to give him those options is they're spreading the, the defense out a little more. They've come out, they've run the shotgun for the majority of this game, something we haven't seen them really do. They used it at times here and there when needed, but it's not something they've consistently shown. They put a new wrinkle in offensively, and it's worked very well here in this game. They've been able to run the ball from the shotgun, and they've been able to throw the ball successfully from it as well. And, and, and you know, Lightning Rod sitting with us here had a good point. <laughs> You know, when, when he said, you you got a game now where you can show new wrinkles, and Jeff brought it up in, in week two, and we had Bernie down by three scores. We come up in the second half, and I was one of them that was critical, thinking, what are we doing? Why are we letting them back in the ball game by not running the ball? But I was reminded that, that this is the time where you got to show some more wrinkles so other teams have something more to prepare when you play them, and that's what you're seeing some more of tonight Medina Valley showing a lot of different formations that'll make Kennett that'll make Kerrville Tyvee and Alamo Heights the two big games pretty much left let me let me tell you a little secret something to study Maury. yep do you know how much video of the Kennedy Medina Valley game that Alamo Heights and Kerrville Tyvee are going to watch zero. zero yeah so they're going to watch tonight, the champion and Lockhart game this tonight is is Medina Valley working on getting more confidence and getting better at route running and, and allowing their quarterback to, like you said, go through their progression. That's what tonight's all about. And I think uh, you might see in the second half, you're going to see the first teamers probably in the first series, maybe the second series, and then after that, you're going to get all the other guys into play. And yep. that's great to see, and that's that's what you like to yeah, get have some happen. get some experience to some of the younger players who don't get to play all the time because – you never know when something's going to happen and somebody's going to be called on to step in. And having them have playing experience is a, a big plus when, you, when you're a team like that. If you get thrown in the fire against a team like Kerrville or Alamo Heights because either somebody got hurt or something happened they couldn't play, now you have somebody who does have game experience instead of just throwing somebody who's fresh and green straight out there and saying, here you go, you know, trial by error right here. And... It's, it's, you know, still got to wait and see, but it's something we pretty much know that's going to happen. And, you know, I am kind of want to reiterate what Jeff said. You might see us with the starting offense or starting, we'll start on defense, the starting defense out there to start the second half. The first punt by Kennedy, and I would venture to say that that first team defense is done for the night. Yeah, I, I believe so too. It, it, this is not a point in the season where you want to risk injuries to players. You have Uvalde next week at homecoming. Um, they're one of the weaker teams in district. You have Memorial the next week, who is one of the weaker teams in the district. You need to get through these next two and a half ball games here, the second half of this game and the next two games. You need to get out of there with wins, and you need to get out of there healthy because the next game they're going to 
have to go play Alamo Heights at home. And that's, you know, when you get into Heights and Kerrville Tyvee, when you think about the schedule, Medina Valley has a, has a legitimate opportunity to beat Alamo Heights, I think. And that game in Kerrville could be for the district championship. Well, let me put it to you this way. That game, if Medina Valley don't trip up the next two weeks, regardless of what happens, the game against Alamo Heights, that game against Kerrville Tyvee will be yep. for first place have first place uh, implications all around because yep. Tyvee they'll mean, have played Alamo Alamo Heights. Heights would have done lost once yep. to, to Tyvee so that would make it three way tie if, if Medina You're Valley right. would stumble then you go with this positive points and negative points I'm not sure yep. how all that stuff works no. but the Panthers are set up shop right now you get through this game you finish this game off you take care of the Coyotes and then you take care of the Minutemen and the Panthers set the set the stake for the last two games with the district championship in sight. Yeah, and we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and then we'll come back. You're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we'll continue in just a moment. Let's get social. Like Medina Valley Broadcast Network on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at MV Broadnet and visit the official website at mvbn.net. Get the latest and join the conversation about all things Medina Valley sports. Come on, let's talk. Double T Outfitters offers deer, dove, turkey, quail, and exotic hunts in southwest Texas on over 20,000 low-fenced acres. They facilitate professional guide services, lodging, and fantastic meals while providing the best in southwest hunting. Contact Double T Outfitters to find out details about their current package hunts. Contact owner Brett Ferguson at 210-413-1597 or online at DoubleTHunting.com. Qualifications, rules, and limitations apply. Rates, rewards, and restrictions may vary by account. Contact institution for details. Tickets, popcorn, and sodas. That'll be $35. Cash or debit? Debit! I mean, I'd like to use my debit card, please. Uh, Can I do it? Okay. All right! Swiping now! What if paying with your debit card was always this exciting? Kasasa Cashback is a free checking account that pays you for everyday debit card purchases every month you qualify. Plus, with ATM withdrawal fee refunds nationwide, that's a lot of extra cash to spend on whatever you like. Ask for free Kasasa checking at Community National Bank. Member FDIC. From the the time our alarm clock rings in the morning to when we turn the lights off at night. Electricity plays an important role in our lives. But most of the time, we don't even think about it. And you don't have to, because the employees at Medina Electric Cooperative are behind the scenes making sure you get reliable, affordable electricity delivered to your house or business. Your cooperative is here for you, and we have been since 1938. Connect with Medina Electric on Facebook, Twitter, or at medinaec.org. You're watching Medina Valley Football. <laughs> this is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium at halftime. Medina Valley leading Kennedy 35-0. to zero. Um, We talked a lot in the beginning of halftime here about the, the game and a little bit about the district coming up. Um, homecoming for the Panthers coming up next week. That game will be right here on the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. It, uh, it will be live at 7.30. We'll be on the air at 7, kickoff at 7.30. Um, homecoming for the Panthers against the Uvalde Coyotes. And also want to remind everybody that we will be live Wednesday night for our coaches show at Sammy's Restaurant. That will start at 7 o'clock and we'll be live there as well. And we'll have some coaches on the show, maybe some players as well. Um, also, like to point out, Mari pointed out earlier the cross country winning uh, district boys and girls, and coming in first in pretty much every division there was. And you know, we had them on the show earlier this year. And they talked a lot about it, and they were very confident going into it. I know they, they won one of the next meets. A couple of the, the individuals came in first place in the next meet they had, and they did very well in district. And congratulations to them as they'll they'll move on. Coach Bermea has the Panthers cross country team trending in the right direction. Matter of fact, Macy Livingston won first place. At district? Yeah, district? yeah, and she was on the show with us. Show. I'll yeah. tell you what, I think it's just good luck, guys. I think it's good luck whenever somebody comes on the show. Yeah, you're right, because everyone that's been on has, has had a good game the next time they played. And good performance? Or something. Yep, and, you know, it's that's always good to see. And, you know, we 
we didn't have a show this week, so we'll talk a little bit here at halftime when we have some time to burn. Since we didn't have a show, let's talk a little bit for the, the guru here. What are your your thoughts? You have the NFL this week. What are what are your fantasy things that you want to talk about here? Mm, that's a good question. I wasn't prepared, but uh, <laughs> fantasy questions. Let's see. If, you, if you're streaming a quarterback, you need to go out and you need to stream Mandy Dalton versus Pittsburgh, or you need to reach out and see if on the waiver wire if you can't get Jameis Winston coming back because they're playing the Atlanta Falcons and that level to be 105 to 104 ball game <laughs> depending on who has the ball last. <laughs> and then the Andy Dalton situation, uh, you have Pittsburgh coming in who their defense is not the normal steel curtain. So I'd look, at the, look for the Red Rocket to exploit them with A.J. Green and Tyler Boyd and hitting a little Joel Nixon out of the backfield. So, and if you're trending some defenses, I know y'all are going to laugh, but I think the Cowboys' defense is going to fare pretty good against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I, I, and I know you, you can't trend the other way because if Jacksonville isn't taken in your fantasy football league, then you're playing with 9 or 10 or 11 other people who don't really know what's going on. Yep. And, uh, you know, move from... How about I want to get to you now. Uh-huh. Notre Dame oh. comes off of a very impressive win against Virginia Tech. Yep. Looked a little lackluster, like you say they usually do, against a lesser opponent. It was one point at halftime, but then in the second half, Notre Dame blew them out. They got Pittsburgh coming in. Who Pittsburgh's coming off of a big win yep. against an undefeated Syracuse team. Is this one of those trap games it, for it could Notre be. Dame. I've I've t- I've been talking to some guys at work about that. Also, you know, Notre Dame's coming off a big win against Stanford, and then again against Virginia Tech. So you've had back-to-back big games against ranked opponents. You got Pittsburgh coming to South Bend. You don't want them to have a letdown. History shows that Brian Kelly's teams do play down to their opponents. You saw it against Vanderbilt. They did it against Ball State also before pulling away in that game toward the end. So this is one of those games where they need to stay focused and come out because, you know, they. I know that the hardest part of their schedule is behind them, but you have a Northwestern team who's who's dangerous. they coming off a win against Michigan State. Um, you still have Navy in there with that triple option stuff that they run that, you know, you, you can't prepare for. Syracuse is not a slouch. Look what they did against Clemson. And I think they play them in the – Orange Dome, they, don't No, they? they're playing them at Yankee Stadium. Oh, it's, part okay. of their, it's part of their Shamrock series that they do. Um, they do play Florida State, who hasn't been good, but you saw them almost beat Miami over the weekend, but they blew it at the end. And then you have USC, who is not the team that they usually are, but they're laying in wait to ruin Notre Dame's season. But that, they will have nothing to gain and uh, yeah, right. nothing to lose and everything to gain with that ball game because with the way they're trending – I guarantee you, they've done circle that last yep. game, that Notre Dame game, and saying this is our bowl game yep. right here because that liable to be the only that they probably won't be no. eligible for well, a bowl game. Well, and that game's in the Coliseum in Los Angeles, and you know Notre Dame and USC is a big rivalry. I know that they're not in a conference with them, but that's one of the big, that's the biggest intersectional rivalry in college football, and they do not like each other, and. USC will play for nothing more than to ruin Notre Dame's chances at being in the the playoff at the end of the season. And you want to talk about tradition? USC's tradition is like Notre Dame's tradition. But I want to get back to another tradition with USC. There's something about them cheerleaders and them white sweaters. I'm telling you. (laughs) They're beautiful. Uh, Yeah, and, uh, well, I'm not going to go there. I don't like any USC, anything. Let's talk about the Astros. Let's go to the Astros. Because they, they start Saturday night, game one, ALCS. I want to ask, hold on, I want to ask Jared a question because when, when it was all starting to come down, you were really upset that the Astros were going to be playing the Cleveland Indians in the first round. I, I was, and I, I thought Corey Kluber would give a better performance than what he uh, did. Well, the whole Indian team, yeah. they look pretty uh, and, lethargic. And credit to Verlander and Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole pitched an outstanding game Absolutely. two. Struck out 12 batters, no walks, seven innings. He gave up one home run to Francisco Lindor. Lindor was the only bright yep. spot for the Cleveland Indians. He, he was. He hit two home runs in that series. Um, he was he was their spark plug. But, uh, but Houston but outscored him twenty-one to six over three games. He was their spark plug. But the unfortunate thing about 
him being the spark plug, they were running on one cylinder, yep. and he was the only spark right. plug. There was no V8 in there. It was a one-cylinder <laughs> Miata. Yeah. Well, in, in Cleveland, you know, they look dangerous, but when you really look at what they did against Chicago, the White Sox, the Royals, and the Tigers, who were awful, they were what 25 games over 500 but when you look at what they did against the rest of the american league they were 500 baseball so you know how good were they because you're facing you're in the weakest division in baseball the best two teams are there yeah they are the best, no doubt. i think the best four teams are there when you look at the nl with the dodgers and milwaukee yeah, also gonna be tough. yeah milwaukee is a tough draw especially for the dodgers milwaukee reminds me of the astros last year yeah young and hungry they haven't tasted it and they're ready. Yeah, they are. Uh, this Boston Astros series, I think, is going to be a very good one. What is the matchup? You've got Verlander against Sale in game one, and then you get Garrett Cole against David Price, who is 0-10 in postseason starts. He didn't look good against the Yankees. No, he historically hasn't. But here's the thing that I talked about earlier is what was the Astros bullpen going to do? They had a .93 earned run average against Cleveland in 11 innings. They gave up one run in the ninth inning against Cleveland in game three. That was the only run they gave up Will Harris. Ryan Presley hasn't given up a run since August 10th. Roberto Ozuna has yet to give a blow a save for the Astros. That back end of their bullpen, yeah, knock on okay. the that back end of their bullpen has looked very good so far. This is when it's decision time, though. They left Rondon and they left Peacock off. Yep. Do do one of those step in? Because I think Peacock, the way he's pitched, he deserves a spot in this next series. I don't think he's pitched that well during the regular season. Colin McHugh, let's not forget about the job he did in that last game against he Cleveland. He's come in. Lance McCullers came off the DL. He's pitched well in his time. Oh, well, you saw what kind of mentality McCullers yeah. has last year. You yeah. give him the ball and he, yeah. he wants it. McCullers he, and McHugh. Are, are those seven, eight-inning guys, you know, seventh-inning, eight-inning guys that are going to come what, in yeah. and, and shut people down? Well, what do you think of the decision, and I, and I give him credit, uh, Boston wanted to finish that series in yeah, at, in New York. And they brought didn't, Sale in the eighth inning. And they brought Sale in in the eighth inning. Yeah. And, you know. Well, and, and think about what they did there. They brought Sale in the eighth. Kimbrell comes in with a three-run lead and walks Aaron Judge on four pitches. They came very close to blowing that game and bringing it to a game five. And when you look at that, you see Boston can be beat. And I think that Houston's offense, George Springer has picked up where he left off in the postseason last the year. The Astros were, were hopping along when they went to Boston. Last year. No, no, no. We here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, a, a month ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're they right. They were limping along, and they, they took three out of four from them. They like righted that's the ship. Right. Yeah, that's right. They, they sure did. they their best pitcher. Yep. So, and so that, there was a big confidence boost there. Yeah, so, I'm, I mean, that Verlander sale game, that's going to be big. But I, I think, you know, with the format 2-3-2, two, two, if you can split in Boston, if the Astros can split in Boston, and come home, they have a good chance. But they do have an opportunity to steal two games there. Well, and I kind of like the comment uh, one of the Astros players made. I think it's about time that, that we put the Showtime Astros on prime time. That was instead, of, instead of, yeah, and that's your MV candidate no, right there. No, and he is because I'd like to point out that Alex Bregman carried that team when the rest of the team wasn't hitting the ball. And they were hurt. And they were hurt. He carried that team through a very tough period there and kept them where they were at and ahead of Oakland in the in the division race. And and I was there last year when Bregman was sent up and played his first game in Houston and they were playing the Yankees and he made two tremendous plays at third base, actually three of them. And then in the eighth inning he came up and hit one to the warning track and the Yankees caught it on the track or he would have came through yep. with the game winning home run there. And since then, it's just been, it's like you said, he's, he carried them when everybody else was yeah, down. He's been, a, he's been a tremendous player for them. He came up with the big throw against the Yankees in Game 7 last year. Uh, here's the thing. Last year, the Astros beat the Yankees in Game 7 of the LCS on my birthday. This year, if there's a Game 7, it will be on my birthday again. I hope there ain't a Game 7. I hope seven. there's not either. But, but if it has oh, to be the Astros, it kills me because I, being that my birthday's in October in 04, I'll never forget when the Astros played the St. Louis Cardinals in the NLCS. They went to a Game 7. Biggio had a leadoff home run in that game. They ended up losing that ball game 5-2, to two, and it just 
you know, when it's on your birthday, it, it just ruins it. It makes it awful, and I hate that it's on your birthday. It gives you that gut-wrenching feeling like, oh, they're going to ruin this day for me. Is that the game that, that Pooh holds his ball off the of lid no. is still going? No, no, that was the next season, and Houston ended up winning that series. Oh, okay. That was in 05. Guys, let's go ahead. I'm going to give you all a few scores. Let's quick. do it. Uh, as the teams come back out on the field and they're warming up, uh, Judson almost at halftime is is having a little trouble with our Medina Valley grad head coach Glenn Mangold's New Braunfels Unicorns. It's 16 to nine uh, with a minute left before half. Brennan is having no problem with Marshall, 44 to nothing at half. Taft and Holmes, 17-14 Taft, with still some time left in the second quarter. Uh, McCullum is ahead of Southwest Legacy, 14 to seven, with a little time left in the second quarter. And Sam Houston Hurricanes are ahead of Brackenridge, 27-17, at the uh, at, at half. Well, and the reason that you don't have more is because we're playing on a Thursday night, and it's a it's a a, a, a small schedule on Thursday nights. We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and take a quick break, Maury. Um, this is the North Park Chevrolet broadcast of Medina Valley Football. We'll return it. This is MVBN, the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. At North Park Chevrolet in Castro, we offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. Peerless Equipment, your South Texas irrigation experts. Peerless Equipment specializes in sales and service of irrigation equipment to the agricultural and wildlife industries. This includes hose reels, big guns, pivot systems, underground pipelines, turbine well pumps, booster pumps, motors, valves, and an inventory of much more. Stop by one of their locations in Hondo and Pearsall or give them a call at 210-434-7867. Peerless Equipment, bringing water to you. Weather in South Texas is unpredictable. That's why our neighbors in Medina Valley trust Four Winds Air Conditioning and Heating for residential and commercial service. Four Winds provides maintenance, repairs, equipment upgrades, and heat load calculations for new construction design and installation. Four Winds offers financing on anything over $300. Family owned and operated since 2006. Four Winds Heating and Air Conditioning. Call 210-892-2925 or on the web at number 4windsacandheat.com. Welcome back here to Edgewood Veteran Stadium where Medina Valley leading Kennedy at halftime 35 to nothing and Kennedy fixing to come out here and uh, we talked a little bit about what, what we think we'll see here and what we think we're going to see that Medina Valley offense for maybe two series, maybe, maybe the third quarter and then that's going to be it for, for probably the starters here and you're going to see some players get in um, for Kennedy. You know, they've, they've had one big play in this game, and other than that, they, they really haven't done a whole lot with the football. Their defense hasn't been able to stop Medina Valley. It's really just been a, a dominant Medina Valley team here so far in this ballgame. An all-out effort by the Panthers, special teams and on offense and defense. And you mentioned, and we talked about it a little bit at halftime, you might see the starters in there on defense for one series if they shut Kennedy down and force a turnover on downs or, or get a punt. And the offense may be out there one time, but you Defense. might see a lot of number nine. Defense usually plays longer into a game like this. Right. They usually yep. leave them out there a little I was going to say, you, 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 you might see number nine out there quite a bit running the offense and getting uh, Charlie Marsh some valuable playing time under center. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, both teams have come back out on the field. As we know, Kennedy's going to get the ball to start the second half as Medina Valley received it to start the ball game. Um, so Dawson Grove will get ready to kick it off here for the second half. This kickoff brought to you by Grove Oil Company and Exxon Stations. And we'd like to also thank Medina Electric for sponsoring our halftime uh, show. Thank you, Medina Electric. And for Kennedy, they will send back number two, 
Gregory San Miguel and number 20 Justin Ariaga to receive as Grove gets ready to boot the ball away. He's placing it at the 40 and he's ready to to get it going here in the second half. 24 minutes of football left to go. Medina Valley with a 35 to nothing lead. They're four and one on the regular season, two and zero in district, and they are one half away here from being three and zero in district play. And growth a high end over end kickoff that will be fielded by Ariaga. They're going to hand the ball off to San Miguel in the reverse up to the 30, 35, and he's brought down. At the 35-yard line, it'll be first and 10 Kennedy from there. Isaac Santos on the stop there for the Panthers, number 44. And so we'll see that Kennedy offense come back out on the field here. Kennedy will move left to right to start the second half. You do have your starting defensive personnel out there for the Panthers. And so the Rockets will come to the line of scrimmage here. Out of the shotgun, Sanchez. Salazar is loaned back to the left. Four wide receivers here. Takes the snap, looking to throw. Left-hander having to roll out of the pocket now, looking to throw on the run. Fires complete. A good catch that time by number 80 for the Rockets. That's Dylan Dominguez, and, and he's staying down. Hey, he stood in there and made that catch, and there was a Medina Valley defender right there to smack him as the ball got there. That was number 28. Grant Snyder put a shot on him. A good, clean hit right in the midsection. And, you know, that's kind of in the kidney area back there where he took that shot. And I'm not surprised that he's still down yeah. there because that was a vicious hit. Yeah, and, and, and a legal hit. He yeah. led with the shoulder pad, not with the helmet. Yeah, and, and, you know, Grant's one of those players like that. He can he hits, he hits can hit you pretty hard. He'll, he'll knock you. There. That's, he, he has one speed. Yep, yeah, and that's fast. <laughs> yeah, that's not that, that's fast. Yeah, he'll hit you hard. And, and that's something we've seen from these Panther linebackers all year is that they – have that instinct to go to the football. We, we always see Grant around the ball. You know, these, these guys just go to the football and they're always involved in the play. And that's what you want to see from your linebackers, always being involved and being there at the football and getting to it quickly. And that time he was in coverage. And, I mean, he made the hit as he got there. Good job by Dominguez to even hold on to the football. Yeah, because that could have easily been a reception and then a forced fumble. Yeah, and it is second down and one to go. It was a pickup of nine yards as the player's gotten up and come off the field here. So Sanchez will bring his team back to the line of scrimmage here on second down and a yard to go. They'll stay in the shotgun with split backs. Two wide out to the left. Kennedy moving left to right. Sanchez takes the snap, hands the ball off left side. Has the first down and a little bit more. He's going to pick up about four yards on the play. That was number 20, uh, Justin Ariaga on the carry, and it'll be first down for the Rockets. Santos and Modulin on the stop there for the Panthers. So first and 10 here for the Rockets, and it'll be first and 10 from the Kennedy 48-yard line as they'll come back to the line of scrimmage here. Sanchez out of the shotgun. They'll send three wide out to the right. No wide receivers on the left side of the formation. Sanchez rolling left, looking to throw, fires against his body, and it in and out of the hands of, I think that was Snyder. He that wants time. that oh, over. I mean, he had that in his bread basket there and just couldn't come up with the interception. That was six points he the other way. He could see the green field in front of him, and he would he really wanted that one bad. Yeah, he did. So... Great it, coverage in yeah, the middle of the field. Your linebacker, and that's not easy to do going back and covering somebody. No, and, and I've noticed when they roll Sanchez out, they always roll him out against his body. He's a left-handed quarterback, and they always make him, he always has to turn to set his and feet. to the short side. Yeah. Out of the gun here, looking to throw again. Short side, fires one incomplete over the head of his intended receiver, number 82, Jack LaRue, and it's going to bring up third down and 10. Charlie Marsh with the underneath coverage. Tanner Bippert with the coverage over the top. And Bippert was in position to make that play, but it, he chose to just go for the ball and, and the receiver and not let him catch it. So a good job in coverage there by the Panthers. Third down and 10 upcoming here for the Rockets. 9.38 and counting as they've gone with a running clock here. They're not stopping it anymore for the incomplete passes. And Sanchez rolling out left side here. 
with his body going to throw on the run. He just throws it over the head of everybody, incomplete pass, and that is going to bring up fourth down and ten. And that was, gonna have to punt. yeah, that he just he was being chased out of bounds by two Panthers, uh, Jared Marty, and I'm not sure who the other young man was, but they were giving chase, and he just threw that ball away, which that was a good choice, but. Nevertheless, it was incomplete. Right, and I just mentioned about a running clock. They stopped it here on that incompletion. The one before, they did not. But 35 to nothing's your score here as Kennedy's going to have to punt it away. Moduling and Bippert back deep to receive the punt here for the Panthers. They're standing at their own 20-yard line. This is Garcia. High snap, gets it down, almost blocked a spiral kick that's going to take a Kennedy bounce and go out of bounds at the Medina Valley 30-yard line. It'll be right around the 30. And they will spot him at the 30-yard line, so it will be first and 10 Medina Valley from there. So a, a better punt than what we saw in the past. Not a great one, but it does get the job done and gets Medina Valley 70 yards from the goal line here with 9.14 to go in the third quarter. Let's see what type of formation the Panthers come up with here to start the second quarter. Yeah, they stayed with that shotgun that spread offense a lot in the first half, trying something new out here. And we'll see what Medina Valley wants to do here. They're going to come out in their slot T set. You've got Charlie Marsh in there at quarterback for the Panthers. Number nine for Medina Valley. Sends a man in motion. Marsh takes the snap and he hands the ball off right up the middle and he is stopped right away. That is number 24 on the carry for the Panthers, Diego Morales. Number 18 on the stop there. A pick, actually a loss of a yard on the play, and it's going to bring up second down and 11. No Gibson. And the whole the offensive line looks new out there yeah. also. Yeah, they've got a whole new offense in the ball game for the 48 actually was the the rocket on the on the tackle. That's Pedro Navarro. So Marsh under center takes the snap, hands the ball off to Salas going around the right side, and he's going to pick up maybe four yards on the play. Looks like he got it up to about the 32-yard line. It's going to bring up third down and seven to go here for the Panthers. John Estrada, number 10 on the stop for the Kennedy Rockets. And they handed it to Salas going around the right side there, and he cut the ball upfield, picked up four yards on the play, but it's third and long here, third and seven for the Panthers. Ball spotted just shy of the Medina Valley 33-yard line. They'll come out here under center. They'll send two wide receivers out to the left. Two backs here for the Panthers as they send a man in motion. That's Hernandez. Marsh rolling out, looking to throw under pressure. Fires across his body, incomplete. He underthrew his intended receiver that time, number 17 for Medina Valley, Lexi Neeb. And it's going to bring up fourth down for Medina Valley. Ezekiel carry on number 50 with good pressure on Marsh, force, forcing him to throw the ball before he wanted to. And the pass was incomplete low. And so Medina Valley going to have to punt for the first time here in the ball game. as Child usually does the punting for Medina Valley. I, hard to see his number here. I, I assume that's Alec Child, and it is. He does get the punt away, and it is a decent spiraling punt that's going to take a Medina Valley bounce fielded at the 30 by Kennedy on the bounce, and he's going to get taken down at the 30-yard line, so that's where Kennedy will start first and 10. So a, a good punt by Child, and Kennedy will have it first and 10 from their own 30. Whole host of Panthers on the stop there on the coverage. Great coverage downfield. You know, he, he fielded that ball. If he don't let it go, it might have went down to the 20-yard line or a little bit beyond that. He saved that. him about 10 yards by, by getting in front of it and not letting it roll completely out. Yep. And so Kennedy will come back to the line of scrimmage here on offense. 35 to nothing. your score. Medina Valley leading the Kennedy Rockets here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. And Kennedy... Comes out to the line of scrimmage here to start this drive. First down and 10. They'll come out in the shotgun here with four wide receivers. Looks like we got a new defensive line in there now, too. They're going to hand the ball off up the middle this time. He's going to get a couple of yards. Looks like he fumbled. Two yards up, or make it a three-yard gain. It's going to bring up second down and seven. 66, Joel Ortiz on the stop there for Medina Valley. That was Devin Salazar on the carry for... The Rockets gets it up to the 33-yard line. Second and seven upcoming. 7.08 to play here in the third quarter and ticking. Out of the shotgun. 
is Sanchez. He'll take the snap. Looking to throw. He's going to throw it on a slant route over the middle. Complete up to the 45-yard line to number 82, Jack LaRue. And he's taken down right away, but a first down for the Rockets. Chris Lopez on the stop there for Medina Valley. And you know that... It looked like he was going to throw the ball down here in the flat to one of his receivers. And, you know, he never squared his shoulders up to make that throw. He just kind of flew open, let it go, and hit his man. That was a very good throw. Yeah. Got it up to the 46-yard lines where they spot him. First down and 10 from the Kennedy 46. Out of the shotgun, Sanchez. They'll send two wide receivers out to the right here as they move left to right. Sanchez takes the snap. Going to hand the ball off, number 20. Ariaga cuts it upfield, gets across midfield down to the Panther 49-yard line. It's going to be a pickup of five yards. It'll bring up second down and five for the Rockets. Number 70 was on the stop there for Medina Valley. That's Nathaniel Thomas. Second down, five to go. 5.52 and counting to go third quarter. Kennedy out of the gun here. Sanchez. Salazar is loaned back to the left. Four wide receivers here. They're going to send a man in motion. Takes the snap. Play action. Rolling out. Looking to throw under a lot of pressure. And that is Ferguson getting the sack. That wasn't Ferguson, actually. That's... uh, J.J. Marty. Yep. Jared Marty on the stop. And as we mentioned, that's a different defensive line than what we're used to seeing in there. But he sacks the quarterback back at the 42-yard line. It's going to bring up third down and 14 to go. Sophomore in there on that play. Number 16, Jared Marty. And a, a good play by Marty. He was the only one that got down there in the backfield, managed to wrap up Sanchez and pull him down. And he broke down and made sure Sanchez didn't get around him. So third and 14 upcoming. Three wide out to the right here. Short side of the field for Kennedy. Rolling out. Sanchez near side. Under pressure by Marty again. He's going to reverse field. Trying to get away. Throws it back to Salazar. Makes a catch at the 35 up to the 40. And he's brought down a shoestring tackle that time by, I believe that's Grant Snyder. Is that Grant? No, that's not him. I think it, it is. It is. He's, his jersey's really bunched up in the back. You can't read his number well. But uh, save that from being a bigger gain as he tackled him by the shoestring. He's going to bring up fourth down in about 14. Jared no Morty was in, in position to make a second quarterback sack, but... Didn't get to him, but forced enough. Yep. So the Rockets will have to punt it away. Good snap. The kick is away. A high, high end over end kick that will bounce at the 37. It takes a Medina Valley bounce up to the 43-yard line, and that's where the Panthers will start first down and 10 with 4.01 to go in the third quarter. See if your offense can get a little bit going here. And we mentioned you got your backup quarterback, Charlie Marsh, in there. But if people remember correctly, last year, Marsh and Child platooned quite a bit as they pretty much had even time as the quarterbacks. They decided that Charlie was more valuable on the defensive side of the ball, but he still is your backup quarterback. Yeah, and he can throw the football. We've seen him do that before. You know, he's very able to run the offense. He'll go under center here, takes a snap, balls on the ground, and Marsh falls back in front of it on the exchange from center to quarterback, put it on the ground, lost a yard. It'll be second down and 11. So that's, you know, just just a bad exchange that time from the center to Charlie Marsh, and Marsh with good enough, you know, sense there just to fall on top of the football and run you another play. Yeah, and you don't know if that was Charlie pulling out too quick or if the center just didn't get it to him, but as you mentioned, good job just getting on the ball. No wide receivers here. Takes the snap. Hands the ball off with room to run. I believe that's Masters on the carry. No, it's not. That's number 23, Pardo. That's his play. Yep, that is. They run that That trap trap to him, and he gets across midfield. Gets it down to the 45-yard line, the first down from Medina Valley. I don't know. I can't remember any time that the Panthers have ran that play to number 23 that it has not been positive yards. Yeah, it works every time they run it to him. It's, it's a good play design, and you know it, it's very elusive. Fools the defense a lot. Takes a snap here. They're going to hand it to Hernandez right side, and he gets a little bit of a head of steam. Gets down across the 40 to... Looks like the 37-yard line. Ball came out late, but they're going to say he was down by contact. Eight-yard gain, and it's going to bring up second down and two. That was number 13, Hernandez on the carry, Caden Hernandez. John Estrada on the stop there for 
the Kennedy Rockets. But now you got your second team in there doing a little bit of work, getting yep. some yardage, grinding out some first downs. Well, and Her Hernandez hasn't been a player we've seen a whole lot yet this evening. They'll come out here under center, one wide receiver wide out to the right. Marsh under center, takes the snap, hands the ball off right up the gut. It's going to be a first down for the Panthers, a pickup of about seven or eight more yards down to the 30-yard line, and it's going to be first and 10 Medina Valley from the Kennedy 30. That was number 40, or Jeremy Estrada again on the stop. But first down by the Panthers. TCU just blew a coverage, and Tech had a 60-yard uh, touchdown pass, so it's 10-7 to seven now, Tech. What a high-scoring game. Wouldn't have expected that from those two teams. Nope. Marsh under center again here. Takes the snap. Ball's on the ground. Marsh picks it up, and he's going to get taken down back at the 37-yard line. Big loss on the play. The second time he's fumbled the ball after the snap right there, and it's going to bring up second down and about 6-17. It's going to go down as a sack for number 48, Pedro Navarro. Second and 16 upcoming here for Medina Valley. Well, that's the thing, too. You've been running that shotgun all night. Now you're under center. It's a different snap for the center. I mean, he's used to that. They run this offense all the time usually, but uh, maybe that, that's messed with them a little bit as well. They'll send a man in motion. That's Pardo. Marsh rolling out to the left. Fires on the run. Complete. Up to the 30-yard line is brought down. That is number 82 on the reception from Medina Valley, Trey Marty. Good catch. Good throw by Marsh. And you, you mentioned Marsh can throw the ball, and we saw that last year already. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage, a six-yard gain. It's going to bring up third down and 10 here from the Kennedy 30-yard line. And those two are brothers, Jared Marty and Trey Marty, for the Panthers out there this evening. 22 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Medina Valley does have to snap the football. Play clock down to 12. Game clock at 16. Marsh under center. He'll take the snap. He's looking to throw. Rolling out right side. Under pressure. Now he's going to keep it. Just run the football himself. Slips one tackle, but he's not going to break two. He's going to be about four yards shy of the first down. A pickup of six or seven yards. But he did the smart thing there. Yeah, and it puts you in a manageable fourth down situation here. Fourth down in probably, what, three yards? Yeah, and that is the end of the third quarter. So we'll go to the fourth quarter. Your score after three, Medina Valley 35, Kennedy 0. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we'll continue in just a moment. Visit mvbn.net for great articles on all your favorite coaches, players, and more at mvbn.net, the official website of the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Peerless Equipment, your South Texas irrigation experts. Peerless Equipment specializes in sales and service of irrigation equipment to the agricultural and wildlife industries. This includes hose reels, big guns, pivot systems, underground pipelines, turbine well pumps, booster pumps, motors, valves, and an inventory of much more. Stop by one of their locations in Hondo and Pearsall or give them a call at 210-434-7867. Peerless Equipment, bringing water to you. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. 35 to nothing your score. Medina Valley leading Kennedy as we go to the fourth quarter. We'll flip, flip sides of the field here. Medina Valley will now be moving left to right as they come out. It will be fourth down and four yards. That play before Halftime made it, uh, it was a six-yard pickup. It's fourth down and four, and the Panthers are going to go for it here. Panthers are going into the breeze here in the fourth quarter. No wide receivers here for the Panthers. They'll send Hernandez in motion. They hand it to him going to the left side. Cuts it upfield. That's the first down and more. Down inside the 20, down to about the 15-yard line. First down Medina Valley as they run that little sweep play around to Hernandez and picked up good yardage. That was great blocking on the outside by number 82. Trey Marty cutting the end down and getting allowing Hernandez to get to the corner. A big fourth down convert. Well, a good fourth down conversion by the Panthers. It'll be first down and 10 for the Panthers. Ball is spotted at the Kennedy 15 yard line. Medina Valley will come back to the line of scrimmage here. 
looks like Pardo and Hernandez, the two backs for the Panthers. Marsh under center takes the snap. Hands the ball off right up the middle. And pushing for yardage there. They're going to pick up about three or four yards. We'll see where the spot is. Looks like a three-yard pickup. It'll bring up second down and seven. I didn't see the number who carried that ball. Did you see who carried I, that ball? I think that was uh, number 24 for the Panthers, Diego Morales. Number 48, Pedro Navarro on the stop, but couldn't tell as it was so quick. Well, and the Panthers are starting to move some different players in and out of the ball games that we were not usually seeing in there. Also, Marsh under center here on second down and seven. They'll send a man in motion. Pitches it outside. This is Salas on the carry. He's going to get down inside the 10, down to about the seven or looks like the seven yard line to where they'll spot him. He's going to be a couple yards short of the first down. It'll be third and two. Number 22 there on the stop for the Kennedy Rockets. And I chose to just say number 22. I still can't figure, I still ain't learned how to pronounce that name. You try it and let me know how to pronounce it. Which one? Number 22. For, for Kennedy? Yes. Oh, uh, that's El Elalio Mang Mangayanis, I think, is what his name is. So Marshall hand the ball off up the middle here. He gets down inside the five. That's going to be close to a first down for the Panthers. And we'll see where they spot him. It looks like he's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. They'll spot him back at the four. It looks like he needs to get to the five. Is that right, Jared? They marked it on the in between the six and the five? Yeah, he needs to get down to the five. It's fourth down and about half a yard here. That wasn't Boy, a good spot. Mangayanis. Mangayanis, okay. There you go. Got it. Number 22, Mangayanis. Ilalio. Mangayanis. Panthers back to the line on fourth and one. Hands the ball off up the middle. Touchdown, Medina Valley. Well, yeah, he's in. Wow, right I there. thought he crossed it. I did too, but they're going to spot him back at the one yard line. He does pick up the first down that time, a pickup of five yards. It'll be first and goal for the Panthers. And that was... Was that Pardo on the carry? 30, 34, 24. 20-something. 20 24, no, that, 24. that was Morales again on the carry. And I thought he broke the plane. I and I too. think he did too because he kind of went backwards and the official never gave him the touchdown. No, and he's down to the one-yard line, first and goal. And that was Morales. He's in there again. I bet he gets it again. I hope so. They'll send a man in motion, takes the snap. Marsh looking to throw. Back of the end zone has a man. Touchdown, Medina Valley. That was trying to get a number on him. They're, they're, mo they're mobbing him in the end zone. Oh, I think and that I was number 83, no, Sean Jones. No, no, I want to tell you who that, that was. I don't know. That was, I want to say that was 83, Sean Jones. There he is. He's running over there on the sideline. It was, it was, that's, it was Sean Jones. It was yep. Sean Jones, number 83. And so 8-10 to go. In the ball game, Medina Valley now with a 41 to nothing lead, and Dawson Grove on to try to tack on the extra point here. That was great to see that young man catch that ball for a touchdown. Marsh, the holder here. Takes the snap, kick is up, and he drills it straight through. So with 7.44 to go, your score now, Medina Valley 42, Kennedy 0. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue in a moment. M-V-B-N. At North Park Chevrolet in Castro, we offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. You're watching Medina Valley Football. <laughs> this is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here at Edgewood Veteran Stadium and it's Medina Valley with a 42 to nothing lead here over the Rockets. 
about halfway through the fourth quarter here. And Dawson Grove ready to kick it away. This uh, kickoff brought to you by Royce Grove Oil Companies and Exxon Stations. As Dawson ready to put his foot into it. San Miguel and Ariaga back deep to receive. It'll be taken at the 16 yard line. They're going to reverse it to San Miguel this time. Gets up to the 25, 30 and he's brought down around the 31 or 32 yard line. Looks like they'll spot him at the 32. It'll be first and 10 for the Rockets. We just got the confirmation that was number 83 Jones on the catch. And that's great. Yep. I'm proud of that young man. 6-11 to play here in the ball game as the Rockets will come to the line of scrimmage here. Sanchez comes out at quarterback again for the Rockets as he'll try to lead his team downfield here and try to put some points on the board for Kennedy here bef before the game ends. They'll send three wide receivers out to the left side. Sanchez out of the shotgun. Takes a snap, looking to throw, rolling out. Sets his feet, fires over the middle of the field. High throw, and it was in and out of his hands. A good hit that time in the secondary, which dislodged the football. Number 14, Steubing on the hit. And he's probably going to go back to the quarterback and say, you got to throw that one down low. You cannot string me out high like that. No, that was number one, James Butler, the intended receiver. And it was a clean hit by yep. 14. He we, never used his headgear. He went with the shoulder pad, put a good lick on him, jarred the ball loose. So it'll be second down and 10 upcoming here for the Rockets. Ball at the Kennedy 32-yard line. Out of the shotgun, Sanchez trips out to the left side. One wide out to the right. Takes a snap, rolling out near side as they move right to left. Sanchez looking to throw under pressure. Flips one up in the air to Salazar. Gets up to the 35-40. Tippy toes down the sideline. He steps out of bounds around the 45-yard line. It's going to bring up, that'll be a pickup of 13 yards. It's going to be first down for the Rockets. Marty and Heck are putting pressure on the quarterback, but he just eluded it and found the open man and right in the flat here. And that was all the receiver after that run after the catch. Yeah, Salazar made the catch. He, he made a man miss, and then he stayed in bounds somehow, tippy-toed down the sideline for an extra eight yards and picked up the first down. 4.43 and counting here. Out of the gun, Sanchez. Salazar is loaned back to the right. Three wide out to the right side. Salazar looking to throw. Pump fakes under pressure. Trying to set up a screen. He has Salazar at the 45. Up across midfield. Makes a man miss at the 45. Down inside the 40. to a, And he gets down to around the 35-yard line before he's brought down. A couple of good plays here by Kennedy. And they're down to the Medina Valley 35, first and 10. Hector Herrera on the stop. And they just caught Medina Valley off guard there. That screen pass. And Medina Valley wasn't ready for it there. They let the defensive line go through and... Well, and that's they, a fell, good, they fell for that screen. That's a good play call there. Medina Absolutely. Valley's pinning their ears back and coming for the quarterback, and that's how you, you fight the pressure right there is get somebody behind it that's open and let them run for some yards. Out of the gun, Sanchez rolling out to his right, sets his feet, fires deep downfield toward the end zone, complete down to the 10, and that was just a case right there. The Medina Valley defender jumped too early, cut underneath it instead of sticking with his man. And it's going to be first and goal Kennedy from about the five-yard line. And I thought we were going to say that's an interception yeah. for the Panthers, and he just mistimed his jump because he was Johnny on the spot right there. That should have been a pickoff. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it's going to be first and goal from the six-yard line. As Kennedy, this is the deepest they've been in Panther territory. This is the first real threat they've had tonight. 314 and counting in the ball game. And they're, you're kind of loving this because what was the score you predicted? I, I thought it was going to be 48 to 7. That's what I said. You're not far. Nope. Out of the gun. Sanchez takes the snap. Looking to throw. He hands the ball off. Was that was that some kind of Statue of Liberty player? He, he, he kind of the ball. No, he kind of faked it and then yeah. put it in his belly a little fake. Uh, uh, like a jump pass and then a, a belly draw there to the running back up the middle. He got down to the one-yard line. Yeah, he picked up five yards on the play. It's going to bring up second down and goal. 235 and counting as Sanchez will bring his play in from the sideline. They'll come straight to the line of scrimmage here. Second and goal out of the shotgun. Split backs here for the Rockets. Two wide receivers. Takes the snap. 
Hands the ball off, trying to get up the middle, and he's going to get stopped short of the goal line. That was Salazar. He got back to the line of scrimmage, but no gain. It's going to bring up third and goal. Grant Snyder was one of them leading the charge in number 70, and I can't see what the other 70-something there for the Panthers also. Minute 55 and counting here. I want to say that was Nathaniel Thomas and Snyder on the stop. It's going to be third down and goal. Looks like he actually lost a yard there as they move him back to the two-yard line. So third and goal upcoming here. Sanchez alone back to the right of Sanchez out of the gun. Sanchez takes a low snap looking to throw. Under pressure, steps away from one man. Now he's got to roll out, flips it to the end zone. Touchdown, Kennedy. So the Rockets get on the board. That was number 20. Justin Ariaga on the reception, a two-yard pitch and catch from Sanchez to Ariaga, and it's 42 to six now. And you can you can you can give all that credit to the quarterback yep. by staying alive, not giving up on the play, letting his receivers work because he had a lot of time back there, and he made that time with his legs. Yeah, he did. He stepped away from the first man, kind of eluded the second, bought a little bit of time, gave his receiver Ariaga a chance to get open in the back corner of the end zone, and found him for the touchdown. Left footed kicker, extra point kick is up and it is good. So with a minute 19 to go, your new score, Medina Valley 42, Kennedy 7. We'll take a quick break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet and we'll continue in a moment. This is MVBN, the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Headed out to the game? Then make a stop at your local Valley Mart convenience store. With 12 area locations, Valley Mart is always right around the corner. Fuel yourself and your vehicle with quality branded gas and diesel, snacks and fountain drinks. Always convenient, well lit with clean restrooms. Valley Mart, family owned and operated since 1984 and a proud supporter of Medina Valley Athletics and area youth sports for over 30 years. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. A minute 19 to play in the ball game. Medina Valley leading Kennedy 42 to 7. As the Rockets will come out to kick the ball away. Number 32, uh, Daniel Garcia will be kicking it away. He also kicked the extra point for the Rockets. A left-footed kicker. Had a good leg on that extra point yep. kick. He booted I was it through. watching him warm up. And he was kicking him from the 25-yard line through. So... Got the range of at least 35 yards. Now they bring a player on very, very late here for the Rockets. Kick is away. High end over end kick that's going to be taken by Hernandez at the 12-yard line. Starting up field. Gets up to the 25-30. Still looking for some room. Bounces to the outside. 35-40. 45. Cuts inside across midfield. And he's wrestled down at the Kennedy 45-yard line. Great return that time by Caden Hernandez. Getting up to the Kennedy 45-yard line with a minute six to go, and I would imagine Medina Valley's just going to—they'll either run the ball here or put a knee down. Well, and if you run the continuous clock, you should only have to run two plays, and I don't see Kennedy using any any timeouts, which they shouldn't. So. No, you're right. 42 to seven is your score. Medina Valley with the football at the Kennedy 45-yard line. So the Panthers will come straight to the line of scrimmage here. Not in the victory formation. They'll come out here with that slot T look. Minute to go as they're running the clock now. Takes the snap. Marsh hands the ball up the middle. Still on his feet and he's wrestled down at the 41-yard line. A pickup of four yards. It's going to bring up second down and six. Estrada on the stop for the Rockets. And that should... Well, I say they'll, do they'll have to snap one more yep. time. There's a four-second differential between the, the play clock and the game clock. And so, really, all Medina Valley's got to do here is just put a knee down. I think they're going to run the ball one more time. Marsh under center. Sends a man in motion, takes a snap. Marsh going to keep it himself, trying to get to the outside. Cuts it up across the 40 to the 38-yard line, and that is... Going to be the final play of the ball game as the clock ticks under 10 seconds to go. And that 
will do it here as the clock shows zero. Your final score in this ball game, Medina Valley 42, Kennedy 7. Medina Valley improving to 5-1 and one on the regular season, 3-0 and oh now in district play. Kennedy falling to 0-3 oh in district play. We'll go ahead and take a break, and we will come back with the post game. You're listening to Panther Football, brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we'll continue in just a moment. Follow us on Twitter at MV Broadman. Tweet and retweet scores, schedules, and more. Tweet at MV Broadman for MVBN. Here at Medina Valley Broadcast Network, we love all sports. We currently broadcast football, volleyball, basketball, softball, and baseball. We not only serve Medina Valley, we also can broadcast other schools in the area in multiple sports. If your business is interested in having us broadcast a single game or a season, and you want to be part of the action, contact Jeff Stivers at 830-931-4504 or email him at jeff at mvbn.net. Tom Gray Gwynn Funeral Home in Castroville, Texas has been providing funeral services to families in the Medina Valley and surrounding areas for many generations. Tom Gray Gwynn Funeral Home is proud to support the broadcast by the Medina Valley Broadcast Network for the athletes and students participating in this event. Go Panthers! Tom Gray Gwynn Funeral Home, Castroville, Texas. You may view obituaries at Tom Gray, T-O-N-D-R-E dash Gwynn, G-U-I-N-N dot com or visit the Facebook page of Tom Gray Gwynn Funeral home to view funeral notices. Sammy's Restaurant and Havy's Alsatian Bakery, two legendary landmarks in Castroville. From breakfast to delicious hometown lunch specials and more, Sammy's satisfies your taste buds with the unique flavor of Castroville. And from fresh baked breads to pies and pastries, South Texans have made Havy's Alsatian Bakery a must to visit since 1940. Sammy's Restaurant, online at sammysrestaurant.com. Havy's Alsatian Bakery, online at havysbakery.com. Weather in South Texas is unpredictable. That's why our neighbors in Medina Valley trust Four Winds Air Conditioning and Heating for residential and commercial service. Four Winds provides maintenance, repairs, equipment upgrades, and heat load calculations for new construction design and installation. Four Winds offers financing on anything over $300. Family owned and operated since 2006. Four Winds Heating and Air Conditioning. Call 210-892-2925 or on the web at number 4windsacandheat.com. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. Welcome back here to Edgewood Veterans Stadium where Medina Valley has defeated Kennedy 42-7. was your final score. And, uh, this game, this was all Medina Valley in the first half. They put this game away. They were up 21 to nothing after the first quarter. Uh, you had three touchdown passes for Alec Child. Uh, James Gibson ran for two more, and then you had the Sean Jones catching the touchdown pass late in the second half, which gave you the 42 to nothing lead. And Kennedy would score right before the end of the ball game to make it 42 to seven. But the Medina Valley offense just looked very dominant in the first half. Their defense looked very good, and uh, we're going to go ahead and give the player of the game is going to go to Alec Child. Um, this is. The play of the game is brought to you by Security State Bank. Not a customer. We make it easy to join the security family. They'll help you make the switch in a snap. So Alec Child, three touchdown passes on the night, uh, played very well. Uh, the One of them was an 80-yard touchdown pass. Uh, found Garrett Leggett in the corner of the end zone on a good play. Just dropped back, flung it up there, and Leggett made a great play to make that catch. And then the first one, he threw to Ryan McCauley early in the ball game, but just a, just a good overall performance from Child. Absolutely. Uh, hats off to the Panthers. They did what they needed to do. They came in and took care of business, and I just want to thank uh, the Edgewood School District for being such a generous host tonight, putting us up in a good spot, good view of the field, and being very, very hospitable, and hats off to Edgewood for another fine uh performance on how to run everything and thank you yeah absolutely and you know medina valley winning this ball game they're now three and zero in district play we'll look ahead to next week they will have uvalde for homecoming that game will be at panther stadium it will be at 7 30 we'll be live on the air at seven o'clock 7 30 is kickoff uh, so and we also want to remind everyone that we'll be at sammy's on wednesday night for your 
for the show there, and we'll probably have a coach on, some of the players also, um, and talk about some of the things going on in the district and uh, some of the things going on around sports uh, in general during that time. And if you are still up and you got the munchies tonight, Sammy's is open till 10 o'clock. The specials on Thursday night is my favorite. All the hamburgers on special. And chalupas so, are on special this week also. And the chalupas are the weekly special. Mm-hmm. So if you got the munchies after listening to Jared's call of the ball game, you can still visit Sammy's Restaurant because they are open till 10 o'clock. To go orders are very well welcomed. Yeah, and I want to take this chance here. I want to go through the sponsor list once here uh, to recognize all of them again for for letting us be on here. The sponsors for the ball game or North Park Chevrolet, uh, Valley Marts and Royce Grove, Exxon, Peerless Equipment Company, Security State Bank, Medina Electric, Double T Outfitters, the Community National Bank. 3D Landscaping, MV Pediatrics, Sammy's Restaurant and Habe's Bakery, Casterville State Bank, Hazel Russell State Farm Agent, Four Winds AC and Heating, Broadway National Bank, Tondry Gwynn Funeral Home, and QRC Health Mart, who is now open in their uh, location in what used to be the Super S or the Food King there in, in Casterville, so go by and see them but as always want to thank the sponsors for making it possible to bring you these games here on the medina valley broadcast network because without them this this wouldn't be possible to be able to bring you these games live here i'm sorry jared thanks uh but i also wanted to let everybody know that uh we have emailed out uh forms for the volleyball playoffs and if anybody wants to be a part of the volleyball playoffs uh please get in touch with us uh, we can set you up, and if you want a form, I can email it to you. Just let us know what your email address is. Uh, text me, Jared, Maury, Dwayne, anybody, and we can get you hooked up for the volleyball playoffs because uh, basically they have locked up a spot in the playoffs. It's not mathematically official yet, I don't believe, but I think uh, they, the, uh, they're pretty confident. We're pretty confident that they will be in the playoffs. So the forms have been sent out, so uh, let us know. Yeah, uh, congratulations to the volleyball team for for pretty much locking up a spot in the playoffs already. And I well, want to thank. And they took Harlan, the team that is undefeated. They took them to five games. Yep. Tuesday night, and I watched it. And I want to tell you that that bunch, them bunch of girls, they're fun to watch. You know, and and they're they're trending in the right direction. I know they're coming off of a a tough loss to Harlan, but they gave the district first place team all they wanted and then some at Harlan's home gym Tuesday night. Yeah and I also want to congratulate one more time the cross country team for for winning district on both accounts girls and boys and for winning pretty much all the divisions going on with the freshman teams and the the, the junior varsity and and the varsity teams all Coach, doing well. Coach, Coach Bermea. Bermea. Yeah did a great job and uh, thank want to congratulate all of them. We are uh, Final score here tonight from Edgewood Veterans Stadium, Medina Valley 42, Kennedy 7. Medina Valley now 3-0 in district and 5-1 on the regular season. Don't forget to tune in Friday night um, when Uvalde comes for homecoming to Panther Stadium. That game will be at 7.30 airtime at 7 o'clock. For Rosie, back at the KMAC Vibe Studios. For Jeff Stivers and Maury Stein, I'm Jared Lucky saying good night. God bless, and we'll see you next week when Panther football continues.